According to Quran, I just want you to help me out. Jesus Christ he is not a God, but his position is unknown. Jesus was crucified for all our sins. Being a human, I get confused. My mom was Christian and my father was Muslim. Why do we need a religion like Islam? In my opinion, you are the most rational, logical, easy to understand kind of scholar that I've ever come across in my life. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All praise belongs to Allah and to Allah alone. May his peace and blessings be upon his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our guest today, answering all of your questions as part of this segment, ask Dr. Zakir, is our dear Sheikh, Dr. Zakir Abdul Karim Naik from India, a medical doctor by professional training. Dr. Zakir is renowned as a dynamic international orator on Islam and comparative religion. Dr. Zakir Naik is the president of the Islamic Research Foundation, Mumbai. Dr. Zakir clarifies Islamic viewpoints and clears misconceptions about Islam using the Quran, the authentic sayings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and other religious scriptures as a basis in conjunction with reason, logic, and scientific facts. He is popular for his critical analysis and convincing answers to challenging questions posed by the audiences after his public talks. In the last 15 years, as of the year 2011, Dr. Zakir Naik has delivered more than 1,500 public talks. He delivered more than 1,500 public talks in the USA, Canada, UK, Italy, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, the UAE, Kuwait, Qatar, Bahrain, Oman, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Botswana, Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong, Thailand, Guyana, Trinidad, Mauritius, and many other countries. In addition to numerous public talks in India, he has successfully participated in several symposia and dialogues with prominent personalities of other faiths. His public dialogue with Dr. William Campbell of the USA on the topic the Quran and the Bible in the light of science held in Chicago, USA in April 2000 was a resounding success. His interfaith dialogue with prominent Hindu guru Sri Sri Ravi Shankar on the topic the concept of God in Hinduism and Islam in the light of sacred scriptures held at Palace Grounds Bangalore on the 21st of January 2006 was highly appreciated by people of both faiths. Dr. Zakir Naik was featured in the Indian Express list of the 100 most powerful Indians in 2009 and again in 2010 amongst the billion plus population of India. In the special list of 2009 of the top 10 spiritual gurus of India, Dr. Zakir Naik was ranked number three after Baba Ramdev and Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, being the only Muslim on the list and topping them all in the 2010. <laughs> Dr. Zakir Naik has been placed in the top 62 in the list of the 500 most influential Muslims in the world, published by the George Washington University, USA. <laughs> Sheikh Ahmed Didat, rahmatullahi alayhi, 
the world-famous orator on Islam and comparative religion, who had called Dr. Zakir Naik DDAT Plus in 1994, presented a plaque in May 2000 with the engraving, awarded to Dr. Zakir Abdul Karim Naik for his achievements in the field of da'wah and the study of comparative religion. Son, what you have done in four years had taken me 40 years to accomplish. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Dr. Zakir Naik appears regularly on many international TV channels in more than 200 countries of the world. He is regularly invited for TV and radio interviews. More than a hundred of his talks, dialogues, debates, and symposia are available on DVDs and VCDs. He has also authored many books on Islam and comparative religion. The ideologue and driving force between Peace TV Network is Dr. Zakir Naik. He launched Peace TV English in January 2006. It's being the largest watched Islamic as well as any religious satellite TV channel in the entire world. With over 100 million viewership of which 25% are non-Muslims. In its footsteps, he launched Peace TV Urdu in June 2008 and Peace TV Bangla in April 2011. I invite to the stage to join us, taking your questions and giving answers, our dear Sheikh, Dr. Zakir Abdul Karim Naik. Insha'Allah, for tonight's session of question and answers with Ask Dr. Zakir, we have five mics set up. The first mic is in the front for the brothers. The second is on the left-hand side, and the third is on the right to the rear. And then we have two mics for the sisters, one on the right-hand side and one in the middle on the rear. We'll be taking questions first from the brothers, and then from the sisters. Now please ensure that we follow the rules of the question and answer session. That is, we give preference to non-Muslims to first ask their questions. So if there are any non-Muslims, you are our guests. We want you to be the first ones to give your questions to Dr. Zakir. Second, we ask that everybody ask one question at a time. If you have a second question, you may go to the back of the line and insha'Allah have the chance to ask again. So we will begin, insha'Allah, to give your questions to Dr. Zakir. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. Amma abad. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Udu ila sabili rabbika bilhikmah. والمؤذن الحسن وجاد ملة حسن رب شلي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه كولي. My respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa taala be on all of you. It's a pleasure and honour for me to speak once again in Dubai. And it's an honor for me to be invited again for the Dubai Peace Convention. And Alhamdulillah, I really appreciate the love of the people of Dubai that they've gathered here in such large numbers. And there was a request from the organizers this time that rather than giving a speech, normally we have about one hour speech and about one and a half hour question answer session, 
for the organizers requested me that this time why don't we have only question answer session so on the request i agreed because people always complain that we aren't able to ask questions so as has been the practice in the past couple of years in bombay and other times if i speak for more than one day we at least give one day completely for question answer session keeping in mind as the chairperson brother musa san antonio said that we prefer giving first preference to the non muslims to ask any questions because today the non muslims are our guests of honor so i request the non muslims please feel free to ask any questions on islam whether it be on hinduism on christianity on buddhism any query that you have this is your opportunity normally we don't have sessions during religious talks after which there is a question answer session alhamdulillah these conferences have made it easy that after the talk we have a question answer session and my session i prefer to give the first opportunity to the non muslims if the questions of the non muslims have been exhausted then inshallah we'll give an opportunity to the muslims to ask questions i request the non muslim brothers and sisters that they can ask any question on islam even if they want to criticize islam no problem i'm young i can take it whether there's criticism whether you want to attack any principles of islam this is opportunity you can ask any question on islam and comparative religion whether it be on islam with the christianity hinduism buddhism sikhism parsiism this is opportunity and i'll try my level best to give you a reply and i request the volunteers that if there is any non muslim in the queue to give them the first opportunity because they are today our guests of honor is there any non muslim brother on microphone number 1 yes brother most welcome i would request them to first mention your name and your profession so that i'll be in a better position to reply to you good evening everyone my name is ryan moses a christian by faith and i am a student of engineering my question sir is according to islam both jesus and muhammad were prophets but prophet isa besides his miracles had an unnatural birth and never died according to islam besides he has a prominent role to play in the day of judgment against dajjal don't you think this special preference given to him by allah makes him more than just a prophet brother ban has asked a very good question he said that islam believes that jesus christ peace be upon him and muhammad peace be upon him both of them are prophets of god but when you compare their lives we realize that jesus christ peace be upon him isa salam had unnatural birth meaning that he was born miraculously without any male intervention and he did not die so don't these two qualities make him superior to prophet muhammad peace be upon him before i reply your question i would like to make it very clear that islam is the only non christian faith which makes it an article of faith to believe in jesus christ peace be upon him we believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of allah subhanahu wa taala we believe that he was the messiah translated christ we believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention we believe that he gave life to the dead with god's permission we believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with god's permission the christians and the muslims we are going together but there is parting of ways the parting of ways is that many of the christians they claim and they think that jesus christ peace be upon him he claimed divinity and he was almighty god first i'll reply to your these queries that if prophet jesus peace be upon him was born miraculously he had a mother but had no father so doesn't it make him superior to prophet muhammad indicating that doesn't it mean he is god if you say that 
Jesus is superior or you claim him to be God because he was born miraculously he had no father Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al Imran chapter number 3 verse number 59 Allah says in the muscle Isa in the like of Muslim Adam Halakha kumin turab summa kala lokun fayakun the similitude of Jesus peace be upon him in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the same as Adam peace be upon him he was made from dust and Allah said be and he was if you say that Jesus is God because he had no father in that context according to the Quran and according to your Bible Adam peace be upon him and no mother and father that makes him a greater God nowhere does the Bible nowhere does Allah say in the Quran that because the person has no father he becomes Almighty God Allah is the best to create he wanted to show people his power normally human being is born with a father and mother he had an example of Adam in Islam who was born without a father and mother you have the example of Bibi Hawa if may Allah be pleased with her who was born without any female the last example pending was a person being born without a father which is fulfilled in the birth of Jesus Christ peace be upon him coming to your second query that we Muslims believe and even the Bible says that Jesus Christ peace be upon him did not die Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse number 157 158 Allah says that he was not killed neither was he crucified but Allah raised him up unto himself so the question is that if Jesus did not die he's alive isn't he a greater prophet than prophet Muhammad peace be upon him the reply brother is that Isa alayhi salam Jesus Christ peace be upon him was the only messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whose followers mistook him that he claimed divinity there is not a single prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of Almighty God whose followers mistook that he claimed divinity because he was the only prophet whose followers mistook that he claimed he was God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him up alive so that in his second coming he could testify to these people that he never claimed divinity that's what Allah says in the Quran in Surah Maida chapter number 5 verse 116 that in his second coming he will tell he'll Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you be my witness I never told them to worship me but I told them Abdullah oh, worship Allah Rabbi wa Rabbakum who's my Lord and your Lord the same thing is mentioned in the gospel of Matthew that in his second coming when people will say oh master oh master did we not do wonders and miracles in your name he will say e evil men I don't even know you to depart from here so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala almighty God has raised up Jesus Christ peace be upon alive because in his second coming he will not give any new message because prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is the last and final messenger which is mentioned in the Quran in Surah Azab chapter 33 verse number 40 after him and after the Quran was revealed nothing new can be added or subtracted from the religion of Islam he will come as the ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he will come not to give any new teaching just to testify to the followers that he never claimed divinity and he is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the major difference between the Muslim and the Christians is that most of the Christians think that Jesus Christ peace be upon him claimed divinity in fact if you read the Bible there is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ peace be upon him himself says that I am God or where he says worship me if any Christian can point out a single verse in the Bible a single unequivocal statement where Jesus Christ peace be upon himself says a single unambiguous statement where Jesus Christ peace be upon himself says that I am God or where he says worship me I am ready to accept Christianity just now I'm not speaking on behalf of my other Muslim brothers. I'm putting my head on the guillotine. In fact, if you read the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, said, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 28. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, My father is greater than I. Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 29. My father is greater than all. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 28. I cast out devil with the spirit of God gospel of Luke chapter number 11 verse number 20 I with the finger of God cast out devil gospel of John chapter number 5 verse number 30 I can of my own self do nothing as I hear I judge and my judgment is just for I seek not my will but the will of my father anyone who says I seek not my will but the will of Almighty God is a Muslim so Bible says Jesus Christ peace be upon him was a Muslim he never claimed divinity and it's clearly mentioned in the book of Acts 
chapter number two, verse number 22. E men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs, which God did by him and you were witness to it. A man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs, which God did by him and you were witness to it. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, never claimed divinity, but he was one of the mightiest messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brother, are you convinced that Jesus is not God? I did not say Jesus is God. I did I not. I said what I, is his position according to Islam. I never said that you said Jesus was God. I am asking a question. Are you convinced that Jesus is not God? Yes, I am convinced of that. But I want to clarify his position in Islam. He, Brother, he before I answer, didn't I tell you he believed that he was one of the mightiest messengers of God? No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. A Muslim cannot be a Muslim if he doesn't believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of God, but he was not God. So do you believe Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is not God? Yes. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? I believe that Jesus Christ being a prophet was more than a prophet. That doesn't make him God, but his position is unknown. What is his exact position? He's more than a prophet but not God. But what is his position? He is a prophet of God, he is a messenger. But he doesn't qualify to be a prophet because he has done uh, like unnatural birth, unnatural death and again day of judgment coming. Brother, such a big, did, such a brother did you hear my answer? If you claim that he is somewhere more than a prophet because he was unnatural born, he was born without a father, then Adam, peace be upon him, becomes a bigger but than Adam, Jesus, peace be upon but him. But Adam had a death, natural death. But Adam, there was no misconception among the followers of Adam, peace be upon him, that he claimed divinity. I There's a misconception among the followers of Christians that they claim that he was God. That's the reason Allah kept him alive. Okay. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hears shall he speak. He shall glorify me. Now this prophecy refers to no one but Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So if you're a good Christian, if you're a person who believes in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, if you believe in his teachings, then you also have to believe that there's someone else to come who shall guide you. And that is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So that is the reason I'm saying that if you're a true believer in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, you have to believe in Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, otherwise you're not a true believer. So are you a believer in Prophet Jesus? Yes. Do you believe in Gospel of John chapter 16 verse number 12 to 14? Yes, I do. He's talking about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to come. So do you believe in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? I can't comment right now. So I request you to do more research okay, I will. on your Bible and you can see my video cassette similarities between Islam and Christianity. Yes, I'll do that. Thank you. Inshallah, we'll now go to the mic on the left-hand side for the brothers. Go ahead with your question, brother. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Rajesh and I'm from IT profession. My question is, why a religion for a peace? Why a religion? Yeah, why do we need a religion? Like Islam, you're, you're preaching Islam. Brother asked a very good question. That why do you need a religion? Like Islam or any other religion? Brother, if you understand what is the meaning of religion? Religion, according to Oxford Dictionary, means a belief in a superhuman controlling power, a personal god or gods that deserve worship. In Islam, the Arabic word used is deen. Deen in Islam means a way of life. So you ask me the question that why do you require a way of life? And why do you require to understand, as Oxford Dictionary says, religion means believing in God. So why do we have to understand God? The reason is that brother, normally when you get a machine, if you get a machine, maybe a complicated machine along with it you get an instruction manual I'm asking the question why do you require the instruction manual why 
my brother to understand to understand because you don't know the machine if you allow me to call the human being the machine you'll have to agree it is the most complicated machine on the face of the earth so don't you think this requires an instruction manual the last and final instruction manual for the human being it is the glorious quran like how you have the instruction manual written by the producer of that equipment or the manufacturer or the inventor our manufacturer our producer our creator is almighty god so he knows what is best for the human being so based on this almighty god has given the rules and regulations for example when you buy a dvd player it tells you if you want to play the dvd insert the dvd press the play button if you want to fast forward press the ff button if you want to skip press the skip button if you want to stop press the stop button don't drop it from a height it will get damaged don't immerse it in water it will get spoiled there's an instruction manual similarly allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last and final instruction manual the glorious quran has written the do's and don'ts for the human being and almighty god has only sent one religion allah says clearly in the quran in surah al-imran chapter 3 verse number 19 in the dina in the la islam the only religion acceptable in the sight of almighty god is islam but by the passage of time whenever almighty god sent an instruction manual the manual in passage of time it changed and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that the human beings may not be able to grasp the complete message of the quran as is mentioned in the bible in the gospel of john chapter 16 verse number 12 to 14 jesus christ peace be upon him says i have many things to say unto you but you cannot bear them now for he when the spirit of truth shall come he shall guide you unto all truth allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that 1400 years ago at this time now the human beings can grasp the last and final message so islam came in its complete form 1400 years ago and the last and final revelation is the quran all the previous revelations the basic message was the same believing in one god worshiping the true god who does not have any image doesn't have any idol you have to prostrate the basic message was the same but because there were changes in the scriptures almighty god revealed the last and final revelation the quran and allah says in the quran in surah hijar chapter 15 verse number 9 that i have revealed the quran and i will guard from corruption now because this is the last and final revelation allah takes it upon himself that he will guard it from any corruption so that's the reason today all the human beings in the world should follow the last and final messenger prophet muhammad peace be upon him and last and final message the glorious quran all the scripture that came before since they were time bound they were meant only for a particular group of people they were not meant for the whole of humanity and the message was supposed to be followed till the new message came allah didn't require to preserve that message when the last and final revelation was revealed and since no other revelation is going to come Allah takes it upon himself to preserve it and it's not only meant for the Muslims or the Arabs it's meant for the whole of humanity irrespective of whether they are staying in Dubai India Pakistan Saudi Arabia America UK Canada all the human beings in the world should follow the last and final revelation and the last and final messenger Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him we'll have the next question from the mic of the sisters on the right hand sides so the sister at the mic, you may go ahead with your question. Good evening to uh, everybody. Uh, this is Prashanti Dasri. Uh, I'm from India and uh, I'm actually a born Christian and uh, I migrated to uh, Dubai recently, uh, August 2011. And I happened to, uh, you know, I, uh, I came to know about Islam. Uh, and uh, my brother also here is in Dubai and he keeps telling us about Allah. I'm really convinced and uh, you know with all the uh, whatever knowledge that he shared with me I'm totally convinced uh, and that you know Islam is the straightforward religion and uh, Allah is Alpha his Omega is the beginning and the his last we cannot see Sun more than 10 minutes so how can we see a creator so I'm totally convinced, but there are some questions, uh, you know, that uh, we have doubts because since I'm a born Christian, 
I have uh, four questions, total four questions to uh, Brother uh, Zakir Naik. Uh, the first question is, Brother, I've been uh, listening to your videos, you know, in YouTube that uh, you were uh, talking about the Holy Spirit and uh, you specifically mentioned that uh, Holy Spirit exists. So, uh, I just wanted to know, is Holy Spirit there in Islam according to Quran? And also there is a verse in Old Testament Bible that the Spirit of God is hovering over the waters. Spirit of God. So is Holy Spirit a separate from Allah? This is my question. Sisters ask two questions. Question number one is that there is Holy Spirit. What is the meaning and who is this Holy Spirit as per the Quran, as per Islam? as compared to Christianity and the Bible does say that the Spirit of God hovers above the water what does it mean is the Holy Spirit separate than God sister you asked two questions if I answer these two questions will you accept Islam I have totally four questions so uh Okay, so you, want, so you want me to answer the first two and then you'll ask the next two questions. No, no, yeah, absolutely. I'm 70% I'm convinced, you know, whatever knowledge that my brother shared with me and I've been watching your videos, I'm 70% I'm convinced. I'm being very honest and uh, very transparent. So inshallah, if the four questions answered, yes. if you're convinced 100% will accept Islam. Inshallah, I will accept Islam. <laughs> The sister asked two questions and after she asked the other two questions that the Bible does mention about Holy Spirit. What is the reference of Holy Spirit in the Quran? What the definition of Holy Spirit, it is not the same as mentioned in Islam because when the Christians, when they talk about the Holy Spirit, they assume it is part of the Trinity, the triune God, Though the word Trinity doesn't exist in the Bible, no way. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When they say Father, they think about Almighty God, like a Santa Claus sitting in the heavens with the earth at the footstool. When they talk about the Son, they think about Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, you know, like Jeffrey Hunter in the movie King of Kings, you know, with blue eyes and good nose, not a polyp nose like a Jew. When they talk about the Holy Spirit, they think about dove that came in Pentecost or when Jesus Christ was being baptized. What is the spirit that is mentioned in the Quran? What I believe is Quran talks about Archangel Gabriel. You are one of the angels sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one of his roles was to get the revelation to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and many other roles he has got. So we believe in the Archangel. So like that, if you say that there is a spirit, we have no problem. But he's not part of the triune God. And both are separate. The angel, the archangel Gabriel is separate than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the spirit even mentioned in the Bible is separate than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They aren't joined. This is the teaching of the church. Because the word Trinity doesn't exist anywhere in the Bible. But if you read the Quran, the Trinity is mentioned twice in the Quran. In Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 171, where it says, Wala salasa. Don't say Trinity. In lakum. This is stop, it's better for you. So Quran says, Wala salasa. Don't say Trinity. And the same message is repeated in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 73. It says, Lakat kafr lazina kalu. They are doing kuf. Those who say that God is three in one. So the word Trinity appears in the Quran twice and both the places it says it is wrong to use the word Trinity. And in the Quran, it is mentioned that don't say Trinity, but the word Trinity doesn't exist in the Bible. The closest verse to Trinity in the Bible is the first epistle of John, chapter number five, verse number seven, which says, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. So this verse, if you read the revised standard version of the Bible, revised by Thaidu scholars of the highest eminence, Christian scholars, 
they say that this verse of first epistle of john chapter number five verse number seven is an interpolation is a fabrication is a concoction and they've thrown this verse out of the bible so the verse in the bible that was not talking directly about trinity but the closest to trinity is thrown out by the scholars of christianity as a fabrication as a concoction so but natural the spirit and almighty god they're two different entities they're not the same and in the Quran, it talks about Archangel Gabriel. He is the angel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hope that answers the question, sister. Yes, brother. I would like to know your other two questions. Yeah, uh, my third question is, um, which is related to Holy Spirit only. Uh, all the prophets, all the man of God, like uh, Prophet Abraham, Prophet Isaac, and uh, Prophet Moses, peace be upon them. Uh, all the prophets, they used to intercede with Allah. They used to interact with Allah. So to interact with Allah, because they are all the chosen ones, they must be gifted by some strength. It might be the grace of God. So it is a power. There is that some power so that they are able to interact with Allah. So what is that power? So what is my understanding? I mean, what was my understanding all these days was with the help of Holy Spirit, all the prophets were interceding with Allah. Is that true? Sister asked the question that the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intercede with Almighty God. Then she said interaction with Almighty God. Sister, the English word intercede and interaction are two different things. So is your question intercede or interaction? Intercede. Intercede means that someone intercedes on somebody else's behalf. Someone intercedes on somebody else's behalf. Now this you have to realize that when you speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need anyone to intercede. The Quran says in Surah Ghafir, chapter number 40, verse number 60, you ask me and I will answer your prayer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not require anyone to intercede with him. Why? And people give the example that, you know, when you go in a court of law, when you're presenting your case to the judge, you hire lawyers. So like that, the messengers of God are our lawyers. This is okay and logical for a judge who is a human being. Because the judge does not know who is the criminal, who is the robber. So the lawyer helps the judge to understand who is a criminal, who is a robber, who is not. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make gap. He does not require anyone to prove to him who is good, who is bad. So it is wrong to say intercede. Yes, someone can pray. A messenger can pray for other human beings. And Allah says in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not require any intercession except who he wills on the day of judgment. So on the day of judgment, Allah says, he will give permission to certain people to intercede. And this, the hadith saying, that this special favor will be given to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So what we know from the history of all the other scriptures, as well as the Quran, as well as the Hadith, that the messengers of God, they interacted with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They prayed for others. But if we use the Prophet to intercede, that means if I pray that if I go through this Prophet, following the commandments of Prophet is good. But if I pray to somebody else besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's what many of the human beings do. They pray to human beings saying they are closer to Almighty God. So if we pray through Him, God will accept our prayer faster and better. This is wrong. We have to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. These prophets of God, they are messengers. Yes, they have special powers. They have special powers. They can speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses certain men amongst men, chooses certain men to communicate his message to the other human beings. These chosen people of Almighty God, we call as prophets or we call as messengers of God. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selects certain human beings in the world to communicate his message to the other human beings. 
these are called as messengers of God. So there is communication between the messenger and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that does not mean that human beings can use these messengers to intercede. That if they pray to these messengers, Almighty God will listen to us. This is the teaching of the church. That you believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and all your sins will be forgiven. This concept doesn't exist in Islam and doesn't exist even in true Christianity. It is the teaching of the church, sister. Hope that answers the question. Yeah, uh, my final question is uh, uh, in New Testament, uh, I mean, uh, in one book, Book of Acts, Paul mentioned about uh, tongues. What do you uh, say about tongues in New Testament? I mean, according to Islam, is that it's totally eliminated, it's not there, or, or the gift of tongues existed at that time? Sister asked the question that Paul said about tongues. If you give me the reference, I have been in a better position. There are many things mentioned in the Bible about tongues. There are many verses in the Quran which speaks about tongue. If you give me the reference what you're talking about, I'll be in a better position to reply to you. But generally, there are many statements in the Bible talking about tongues. And also says, if you read the gospel, if you read the gospel of Mark, it says that anyone who is a believer, he will be able to understand foreign tongues and speak foreign tongues. That means if you are a believer in God, then you can understand foreign languages and you can speak foreign languages. So that's what I did when I had a debate with Dr. William Campbell. I gave him a 100 rupee note. And the Indian 100 rupee note, as you may be aware, since we have got 22 official languages, I read in English 100 rupees, Hindi says 100 rupiah. I asked him to read the other 20 languages, if he's a believer, and he could not. There are many references in the Quran talking about tongues. If you read the Quran, the Quran says in Surah Rum, chapter number 30, verse number 22, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the human beings in different colors and tongues so that you should recognize each other, so that the men of understanding will understand. Furthermore, the Quran says that on the day of judgment, your tongues, your organs, your hands, they will be witness for you. What you did right, what you did wrong. There are various hadith of the Prophet talking about the tongue. So there are many references in the Quran talking about the tongue. There are many references in the Bible that talk about tongue and how to test a believer. Hope that answers the question, sister. Thank you. And my final question. <laughs> okay, uh, I have a Muslim friend and he suggested me uh, to read Bible Old Testament. Okay, he specifically mentioned to uh, follow, go through the Old Testament in Bible. And then he said, read Quran. Uh, but uh, as you mentioned specifically, uh, you know, that uh, Quran is the final uh, revelation given by Allah. So uh, as a Muslim, what do you suggest me? Uh, because my friend is being a Muslim, he said, follow Bible Old Testament and then read Quran. So. Sister, as the question that one of her friends told her that first read the Old Testament, then read the Quran. Sister, it's not the must. If there is something like the Old Testament and the New Testament, then there's something like the last testament in the Quran. So when the Christians say Old and New Testament, this is the last and final testament of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now I am asking you the question. Suppose you have different versions and editions of a book. For example, you have gone to a medical college. I was in a medical college, you know, Prophet Keith Moore wrote some books and his book had first edition, second edition, third edition. So would you read the first edition or the latest edition? Of course, I'll go for the latest. Latest, correct. Yes, if you really love the first edition, you know, I'm a fan of the first edition, then I said, no problem, read the first edition, then read the last edition. So if you're so much hooked on to the Old Testament, and you know your Old Testament is close to your heart, then the Quran says in Surah Imran chapter 3 verse 64, Come to common terms, I have been asking you. Then I would say that if you are so much hooked on to the Old Testament, no problem, read the Old Testament, then read the Quran, at least agree what is common. And when we read the Old Testament, New Testament and the Quran, we come to know that the thing that is common in these scriptures is that there is one God and He deserves to be worshipped. He has got no image, He is not begotten 
it further says that Jesus Christ peace be with is not God and both the scriptures say that the last and final messenger is Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him so sister now are you prepared to accept Islam of course yes <laughs> Sister, do you believe that there is one God? Yes, I believe there is only one God. Do you believe that Jesus is not God but is a messenger of God? Yes, I believe Jesus is a messenger. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger? Yes, I believe Prophet Muhammad is the last and the final messenger. Sister, is there anyone forcing you to accept Islam? Sorry? Is there anyone forcing you to accept Islam? No, nobody is forcing me. Are you accepting out of your free will? Yes. Because in Islam, to force anyone to accept Islam is haram. It's haram in the religion and it's haram, it's prohibited in most of the countries, I believe, even in Dubai. To force anyone to accept a religion is forbidden. So you're accepting out of free will, sister? Yes. But that is the reason I asked you many questions. MashaAllah. Out of it's free will. <laughs> hope. I hope no one is bribing you. No. You know, because in India, when after many people accept Islam, the CID, the police go there and ask how much dollars Dr. Zakir I give you. <laughs> I tell them I have given them currency of the Akhira. Currency of the Akhira and that's accepted. So inshallah sister, I will say in Arabic and you can repeat it. Okay. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wahashadru Anna Anna Muhammadan Muhammadan Abduhu Abduhu Warusuluhu Warusulu I bear witness I bear witness that that there is no God that there is no God but Allah but Allah and I bear witness and I bear witness that that Prophet Muhammad Prophet Muhammad is the messenger is the messenger and servant of Allah and servant of Allah Mashallah sister you are a Muslim yeah. and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your effort <laughs> and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that to guide you further and inshallah give you the best in this world as well as the akhira and grant you a place in paradise inshallah sister thank you inshallah we'll now have the next question from the second mic of the sisters in the rear Assalamu alaikum Brother, my name is Ambreen and I'm from Australia. I've just recently come to Dubai. Um, my sister, question... Sister, are you a Muslim? Yes, alhamdulillah. So please would you give a chance to the non-Muslim first. Inshallah, after they've exhausted, inshallah we'll take questions from the Muslims. We prefer first to give the portion to the non-Muslims. It's their right to ask first. So if there are any non-Muslims, on microphone number two from the ladies. Are there non Muslims in the queue on the microphone number two? Okay, so can we go further to microphone number five? To the third microphone in the gents. Are there any non Muslims that would like to ask a question? If so, just come to the front of the queue and let the organizer know that you'd like to ask a question. My name's uh, Bezo Laurent, uh, Cameroonian by nationality. I'm a sales executive in a private company here in Dubai. I've been in a situation, I've been associating with uh, Muslims, and they've been telling me a lot about Islam, and with their way of life, I've been cherishing and admiring it so much. I began yesterday here with a question which was rightly answered, but with some other questions in mind. I could not accept Islam till all such questions are being answered. So it's a privilege once more again today to bring before the audience this one more question, after which I'm going to declare my intentions and my view of Islam. So my question is this. When you get to a company, Let's say you purchase a new car. You take this car on the road, and you get to discover that there is something missing from this car. Let's say the horn, you discover that it's lacking. 
I don't know, in your mind, what do you think? Is it that they did not put the horn or something happened for that horn to just cease or what? I don't know. Relating it to the world in which you are in, I want to ask whether the world as a whole which was created by an almighty God, somebody who is so powerful and the most intelligent being in the world, he created the world, we got into it, and we are today looking for peace, 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 peace. Where did this peace go to? When the world was created by the most intelligent being on earth, is it that he made an error somewhere, or we are looking for something that he did not want it to be in his world? Thank you. Brother asked a good question, and he gave an example that if you buy a car, a new car, and then you find that there is no horn. So is there something missing? With this analogy, he says that today, in this world there is no peace. Everyone is looking for peace. So did Almighty God, did He create peace? Or did He want human beings not to get peace? Brother, you asked a very good question. You know, I'll give you an example about the car. You know the new BMW car, the latest model 2012, the high model, you know, 7 Series, or even a Mercedes. And it's a true story. Once when I was traveling with my friend, he told his friend that, go and park my car. So when he went to the car, he said he could not find the ignition key. Ignition key. So he phoned my friend and asked him that, where is the ignition key? So he started to laugh. The new cars don't have ignition hole. It is the latest technology. If the key comes close to the car, automatically it senses. You push the button, it starts. Latest. So if you're outdated, you may not know that there is no key hole required in the latest car. These are automatic. So you're searching for something. It is very close to him. But he could not understand it because he did not know about it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as far as peace is concerned, the main source of peace is as -salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, is the main source of peace. If you cannot understand the creator, you will never come close to true peace. There are different types of peace. Some people think that if they get luxury, if they get facilities, they get peace. These are all temporary peace, not the true peace. The true peace is peace of heart, peace of mind, peace of soul. When your heart is at peace, when your mind is at peace, when your body is at peace, and this can only be achieved by understanding the Creator. So those people who don't understand the Creator, they are running after mirages. You know, when you go in a desert, you see mirages. So you run after mirages because you don't understand. And to understand the Creator, as I mentioned earlier, you require instruction manual. You did not read the instruction manual of the latest BMW and you're trying to find out where is the ignition key, where is the horn. You read the instruction manual, you will find horn, you will find the ignition key as well as peace. And I do agree with you, many people talk about peace, many countries talk about peace, they are talking about their personal material thing about the security, then you get peace. The true peace is peace of mind, peace of heart, peace of soul. I don't know about what you're talking about other human beings. Mashallah, I am at peace. I don't know how many human beings you interacted with. I can tell you, Mashallah, I, Dr. Zakir Naik, I'm at peace, Mashallah. And I found peace because Islam comes from the word Salam, which means peace. It's also derived from the Arabic word Silm, which means to submit your will to Almighty God. So true peace is, Islam means peace acquired by submitting your will to God. So until you do not submit your will to God, brother, you will never acquire true peace. Hope that answers the question. Not really. Hope that answers the question, brother. Yeah, I've got the question. So are you prepared? 
to accept the new peace. Really, Doctor, thank you very much for the clarification. At least with uh, that in mind, I've really acknowledged Alam as, I've really acknowledged Islam as a learning institution, as a school where we learn to benefit ourselves. So as from today, I want to be part of that school to learn the right way of life. Exactly. But do you believe that there's one God? I do believe. Do you believe that Jesus is not God? I do believe. You believe in the messenger of God? I believe. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of God? I do believe. Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? Nobody is. My Are you uh, doing out of your free will? It's a free will. Out of your own conviction? Exactly. No one is pressurizing you? No pressure. Mashallah. Inshallah, so I'll read Arabic and then you can repeat it. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abdul. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness. That. That. There is no God. There is no God. But Allah. But Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness that that Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad is is the messenger, the messenger and servant of Allah, and soul of Allah. Mashallah, you are a Muslim, <laughs> and I pray to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that to guide you further, and inshallah through you, may He make more non-Muslims enter peace. Enter the region of peace. And I pray to Allah SWT to grant you the best in this world as well as the Akhirah. Do we have on any of the other mics, whether it be from the brothers or the sisters, any non Muslims who would like to ask a question? Yes, we have one from the brothers. Go ahead. First of all, thanks God given this opportunity for me. My name is Sundarajan, basically from a Hindu religion. But I'm not differentiating Muslims and uh, Hindu or any other Christian, but uh, one small doubt. God doesn't have shape, but even if we are going temple in Hindu, we are, you know very well, there are different names of gods and uh, different pictures and uh, statues, you know very well. My question is, if I am going temple, if for example, if I am suffering something problem if i am going temple if i pray for me god will accept or not this is my question the brother has the question that god does not have shape but if i go to a temple and if i worship idols does god listen to me does god answer my prayer or not but if you read bhagavad gita bhagavad gita is the most widely read book amongst all the scriptures of hinduism but have you heard of Bhagavad Gita? I know some of things, but yes. I am not all. If you read Bhagavad Gita chapter number 7, verse number 20 says, All those whose intelligence has been stolen by material desires, they worship demigods. They worship false god. That means, if you are a materialistic person, you worship false god. You worship demigod. And further it says that those who worship false god, Almighty God, true God, yet answers your prayer, but you go to the kingdom of false God. That means even if you worship false God, God many a time answers your prayer so that you go to the kingdom of false God. Same thing is mentioned in the Quran in Surah Baqarah chapter number 2, verse number 15, that Allah gives them rope so that they may go to and fro. Allah says in Surah Baqarah to the hypocrites, to the munafiq, to the kafir, that Allah gives them rope to go to and fro so that they will understand. So many a time, many a time, even if you worship the false God, your prayers are answered. That does not mean that you are worshiping the correct God. Because many people think, for example, many of the people who are non-Muslims, they are wealthy. They are leading a luxurious life. Now, wealth is not the criteria for you to go to Jannah. It's not the criteria for you to go to paradise. The Quran says, wealth is a test. Anything which good befalls you, it can be two things. 
it can either be a reward from God or it can be a test from God any calamity that befalls you it can either be a punishment or it can be a test so suppose you worship a false God you go to a temple and you worship the idol just because your prayer is answered that does not mean you're worshiping the true God God is testing you you ask for wealth God gives you wealth God is testing you that do you follow the true path or not because if you read the Hindu scriptures Bhagavad Gita is called as the nectar of the Vedas the most superior scripture amongst all the Hindu scriptures are the Vedas there are two types of scriptures one are Shruti the other is Spriti Shruti is the word of God and Spriti is the word of human beings so among the Shruti you have the Vedas and the Upanishads these are the highest when you read the Chandogya Upanishad chapter number six section number two verse number one it says Ekkam Evidityam it's a Sanskrit quotation which means God is one without a second if you read the Sveta Svetar Upanishad chapter number six verse number nine Nakasya Kasij Janita Chadipa of that God there are no lords he has got no parents Almighty God has got no superior he has got no mother he has got no father it's mentioned Sveta Svetar Upanishad chapter number four verse number 19 Na Pratima Asti of that God there is no Pratima Pratima is a Sanskrit word which means an image, a photograph, a painting, a picture, an idol. It means a portrait. It means a statue. So Sveta Svetara Upanishad chapter number 4, verse number 19 says, Na Tasrapatima Asti, of that God, there is no image, there is no photograph, there is no painting, there is no portrait, there is no idol, there is no statue, there is no sculpture. The same message repeated even in Yajur Ved. Chapter number 32, verse number 3. Na tasya patima asti. Of that God, there is no image, there is no picture, there is no painting, there is no portrait, there is no idol, there is no sculpture, there is no statue. So if you go back to the scriptures, you realize that according to the Hindu scripture, Almighty God has got no image, he has got no statue. So if you worship an image, you are going against the Vedas, you are going against Upanishad. So just because you are going and praying. Sometimes, as the Bhagavad Gita says, God may answer your prayer to test you. That do you follow his commandment or not? That does not mean that who you are worshipping is correct. So that's the reason you should follow your scripture. And your Hindu scripture says that Almighty God has got no idol, has got no image, has got no photograph, has got no sculpture. So making an idol of God, an image of God, a photograph of God, a statue of God is prohibited in Hinduism. Does that answer your question, brother? Okay, thank you. So do you believe that God has got an idol? Yes. Do you believe God has got an idol? You mean what, uh, clearly? Do you believe in idol worship? Yes. So aren't you going against the scripture? Aren't you going against the Vedas? My point of view, faith only. So brother, you said that you are a Hindu, correct? Yes. So do you believe in the Vedas or not? Yes. So I quoted references from a Hindu scripture that your Hindu scripture, Yajur Ved, chapter 32, verse number 3, says that God has got no image, has got no portrait, has got no idol. So isn't idol worship wrong? No, I don't have much communication skill, so that's why I could not express more. You don't have to have communication skills, you have to read. You have to read your scripture. I'm quoting. I'm giving references from your scripture. You don't have to hunt. You have to go back home, or we have a library in Bombay, Islamic Research Foundation Library, which we have translations of all the major scriptures in the world. Or you go on the internet and type. Go Yajurved, chapter 32, verse number 3, and read the translation. It says, Almighty God has got no image, has got no photograph, has got no painting. So do, do you believe in the Vedas or not? Yes, I am believing. So if your Veda says God has got no idols, will you yet go to a temple? But uh, from my childhood onwards, I am going there. Suppose your father believes from childhood, 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. So would you believe today? If they teach it from the first standard onwards, then I would also do the same thing. So if someone teaches in the village 2 plus 2 is equal to 5 from first standard and he comes to you, so will you say 2 plus 2 is equal to 5? That is the first case of my knowledge, then that is the way I will accept it. 
So suppose your son goes to a school and they teach two plus two is equal to five. So will you say, son, no problem, continue? Will you say that? No, 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 no. See, see, see. What you will tell your son, my son, that teacher taught you wrong. See, already I studied two plus two is four, so I cannot put my son two plus three, two is five. No, but if he goes to a school before admission, do you interview the math teacher? No. No. So suppose the math teacher teaches him wrong. So won't you correct your son? Yeah, I will correct it. Correct. So that's the reason I'm correcting you. I love you, brother. Thanks. Because I love you, I want to correct you that what you're saying is against your scripture. Forget what the Quran says. Forget what the Bible says. If you read your Hindu scriptures, your Hindu scripture says that God has got no image, has got no picture, has got no painting, has got no idol. So if you're doing idol worship, you're going against your scripture. So what I request you, brother, today when you go back home, go on the internet, type Yajurvej chapter 30, verse number 3, Sveta Sveta Upanishad chapter 4, verse number 19, and try and read the translation, and tomorrow, Inshallah, come again, we're having a question and session. Tomorrow at 9 o'clock, same time. And Inshallah, we'll give you the first opportunity. Okay, thanks. Yes, sister, most welcome. I'm coming from two different cultures. So I'm half Filipino and half Indian. Now, um, my good friend, she brought me here. I believe everything about Islam. I have no other doubts, but I just want you to help me out how. I mean, I'm not really sure what's really stopping me. So like, I just want to ask you if you can help me out. Sure, sister, you can go ahead with the question. What is the doubt? And that's that, that's the doubt. I don't know what's really stopping me. No, no, you are saying that you have read Islam and you agree with Islam, but there's something that is a doubt. Yeah, there's something that's stopping me, but I just don't know. I just really don't know. Sister, so, so the question that there's something that is stopping me, but I don't know what's stopping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sister, if you don't know what's stopping, so let that don't know. So just. You forget about that? Okay. Sister, do you believe that there's one God? Yes, I do believe. Do you believe that idol worship is prohibited? I do believe. Do you believe that Jesus is not God? Yes, I do believe. You do believe that he's not God? I do believe he is not a God. But, but he's a messenger he's, of God? Yes. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of God? Yes, I do. Sister, these two things that there is no God but Allah, and Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, is sufficient for you to enter the school. When someone is entering the school, he need not be a graduate. He knows the basics, he enters the school, and then he learns more. So my request to you would be that if you believe that there is no God but Allah, and you believe that idol worship is prohibited, you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God, you go ahead, and inshallah, God will guide you further, and inshallah, you'll be a more practicing Muslim. Okay. So do you want to accept Islam, sister? I think I should. Why not? Is there anyone forcing you? No. Nobody's forcing me. Are you doing all of your own free will? Yes, I So inshallah, I'll just say it in Arabic and you can repeat it. Okay. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan Abduhu Abduhu Warusuluhu Warusulu I bear witness I bear witness that that there is no God but Allah there is no God but Allah and Prophet Muhammad and Prophet Muhammad is the messenger and servant of Allah is, is the, the messenger, messenger and servant of Allah MashaAllah you have become Muslim <laughs> I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you further and to remove any obstacle. And if you have any questions, you're most welcome to write an email at zakir at irf.net. And inshallah, inshallah, we'll try and reply to our queries if there's any further. Inshallah. Thank you. Do we have any other non Muslims on the mic on this side? Yes, we do. Go ahead, brother. Uh, yes, please. My name is Chandi Raja. I am from India. I am working as assistant manager accounts. I would like to ask two questions. Number one, as you say, Islam is a way of life. 
as per the Quran. Okay? What do you mean by way of life? What are the explanation for that? Can I get number? Brother, the question that in my earlier answer I said Islam is a deen, it's a way of life. He's asking what do you mean by way of life? Way of life means how do you lead a life? What is good for you, what is bad for you, what is harmful, what you should eat, what you should not. There are few do's and don'ts, few things which are compulsory in life, few things which are prohibited, the remaining are mobile optional. So the Quran is a guide, is an instruction manual for the human being that how a life should be led. Like how when you buy a machine, you have an instruction manual, what is good, what is bad, how you should operate. So the way of life is how should you lead your life? And what are the good things that you should not rob, you should not cheat, you should be truthful, you should pray to Almighty God, you should give charity to the poor. All these are instructions. Like when you appear for an examination, brother, if you want to pass the test in science, so what do you do? You read the textbook, you memorize it, and you appear for the paper. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Mul, chapter number 67, verse number 2, Allazi khalaqal mawta wal hayata. It is Allah who has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. So this book is the instruction manual. You read it and you lead your life according to how a creator wants. If you follow the instruction correctly, you will go to paradise. If you disobey, if you break the rules, then you won't go to paradise, then you go to hell. So this is a way of life mentioned in the Quran and the Sahih Hadith that the sayings of the last and final messenger Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Hope that answers the question, brother. Sorry for interrupting. One more. Suppose, as you said, that uh, it is the way of life, but following the way of life, as is said in the Quran, there are a lot of hurdles which we have to come across in each and every day of life. Could you explain me? Brother said that following the way of life, many hurdles will come. Brother, I, by my education, I'm a medical doctor. To pass my degree, Bachelor of Medicine, you know, when you pass BA degree, the test is easy. But when you pass BA, you become only a graduate. When you pass graduation, MBBS, Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery, it's more difficult. You know, we have to study for 18 hours a day, sleep less. But once you pass, you get a better honor, doctor, DR in front of your name. So higher the degree, more difficult is the test. So this Quran shows you a way of life. Once you pass this test, you go to Jannah, you go to paradise. Hurdles are bound to come. When you sit for an examination, there are bound to be some questions which are difficult. That does not mean run away from the examination. So hurdles are bound to come, but this hurdle will take you towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is testing you. If there are no hurdles, then where is the test? If there are no hurdles, brother, in life, then where is the test? As I mentioned earlier, Almighty God has created life and death to test which of you is good in deeds. If there are no hurdles, then where is the test? Allah wants to test you whether you follow His commandments or not. So this life where there is a test for the hereafter, unless there are hurdles, how will you be tested? You can't say, I want to appear for an examination, I don't want to study, I don't want to read anything, and I want to pass. How can you pass? To accept you. I hope that answers the question, brother. To accept you, but there is one more question from my side. Yes, brother, most welcome. What's your question? Regarding Hinduism compared to that is Islam. In the Hinduism, it is also said that there is only one God. Whereas the same is said in Quran also. Is it good to go with Islam or with Hinduism? MashaAllah. It's a very good question. Brother says that he's a Hindu. He knows the Hindu scripture says there's one God. Even Islam says there's one God. Is it better to follow Islam? Or is it better to follow Hinduism? The reply is given in Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse 64, where Almighty God says, Tala vila kalimatin sawa im baina bainakum. Come to common terms as between us and you. So let us agree to follow what is common. The first is Allah nabda illallah, that we worship none but Allah. Now, I'm giving you an 
answer that will satisfy both the Hindu and the Muslim. The first step to do is better follow what is common. What is different, we'll discuss tomorrow. So when you're following what is common in the Quran and the Hindu scriptures, neither the Hindu will feel offended, neither the Muslim will feel offended. The problem is neither do the Hindus know, neither do the Muslims know very well what is common in both the scriptures. First thing most important is Allah Nabu Allah that you worship none but one God. That you already know. You already agree that there's one God? Alhamdulillah. Let's go to the other point. The other point that is common is that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of God. The Muslims agree, Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God. If you read the Hindu scriptures, there are hundreds of references I can give you. Only from the Hindu scriptures talking about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I can give a talk, time does not permit me to give a long talk of a couple of hours. But if you read the Hindu scriptures, it's mentioned Bhavisha Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 3, Adhe 3, Shlokas 5 to 8 about the coming of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's mentioned Bhavisha Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 3, Adhe 3, Shlokas 10 to 27 about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's mentioned Bhavisha Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 1, Adhe 3, Shlokas 21 to 23 about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you read Atharva Ved, it's mentioned Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 127, verse number 1 to 14, it's called as Kuntap Suktas. Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 127, verse number 1 to 14, it talks about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's mentioned Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 21, verse number 6 about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 21, verse number 7 of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's prophesied even in Rig Ved, book number one, hymn number 53, verse number nine. There are many references of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Hindu scripture. He is called as Ahmad, means one who praises. That was the other name of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is mentioned by name as Ahmad in Psalm Ved Uttarchik, mantra number 1500. He is mentioned as Ahmad in Psalm Ved Indra, chapter number two, verse number 152. He is also mentioned in Yajurvay chapter 31 verse number 8 in Rig Ved book number 8 hymn number 6 verse number 10 he's mentioned Atharva Ved book number 8 hymn number 5 verse number 16 in Atharva Ved book number 20 hymn number 126 verse number 14 he is mentioned by name as Narashansa Narashansa in Sanskrit means Nar means man Shansa means one who's praiseworthy. So Narashansa means a man who's praiseworthy. If you translate into Arabic, it means Muhammad. So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is mentioned by name as Narashansa in many places in the Hindu scriptures. In Rigved, book number one, hymn number 13, verse number three. Rigved, book number one, hymn number 18, verse number nine. Rigved, book number one, hymn number 106, verse number four. Rigved, Book number one, hymn number 142, verse number three. He's mentioned Rig Ved, book number two, hymn number three, verse number two. Rig Ved, book number five, hymn number five, verse number two. And Rig Ved, book number seven, hymn number two, verse number two. Rig Ved, book number ten, hymn number 64, verse number three. Rig Ved, book number ten, hymn number one, two, verse number two. In Yajurvay chapter number 21, verse number 55. Yajurvay chapter 20, verse 37. Yajurvay chapter 20, verse 57. Yajurvay chapter 28, verse number two. Yajurvay chapter 28, verse number 19. Yajurvay chapter 20, verse 42. I can keep on and on quoting only references from the Hindu scripture about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if you are a good Hindu, you should believe in Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'll just give you one reference more about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Kalki Purana. He is mentioned in Kalki Purana book number 2, verse number 4, 5, 7, 11 and 15. It says that this Kalki Purana is the last and final Antim Rishi is the last and final messenger. His father's name will be Vishnu Yas. Vishnu means God, Yas means servant. It means servant of God. In Arabic, it's Abdullah. And you know the name of Prophet Muhammad's father was Abdullah. It mentions his mother's name would be Sumati. Sumati in Sanskrit means peace, serenity. In Arabic, it's Amina, and that was the name of the mother of Prophet Muhammad. It says he'll be born in the city of peace, referring to Makkah. He'll be born in the family of the priest of that city. We know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born in the family of Quraysh. He will be a universal Antim Rishi. 
He'll be universal, as the Quran says in Surah Anbiya, chapter 21, verse 107. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةِ الْعَالَمِينَ That we have sent thee not but as a mercy to the whole of humanity, to all the worlds, to all the creatures. It prophesizes that he will get the revelation in a mountain. We know he got the revelation in Jabal Nur in Gara Hira. It says he will migrate northwards and come back. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated from Makkah to Medina northwards and came back. It further says that he will have four companions, talking about the first Khulfa Rashidin. Hazrat Abu Bakr, Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Usman, Hazrat Ali, may Allah be pleased with them all. So all these prophecies mentioned in the scriptures point to no one but the last and final messenger prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if you are a good Hindu, besides believing in one God, you also have to believe in the last and final messenger prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It's mentioned in both the scriptures that you should not have alcohol. Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 19, not to have alcohol. It's mentioned in Manusmiti, chapter number 9, verse number 235, you should not have alcohol. Manusmiti, chapter number 9, verse number 238, you should not have alcohol. Manusmiti, chapter number 11, verse number 55. Manusmiti, chapter number 11, verse number 94, you should not have alcohol. So, if you're a Hindu or a Muslim, you should not have alcohol. Both the scriptures say that you should not gamble. Surah Maida chapter 5 verse number 19 in the Quran says that Manusmiti chapter number 9 verse number 221 to 228 says you should not gamble. If you read the Rig Ved, book number 10, hymn number 34, verse number 3 and 13 says you should not gamble. So if you are a good Hindu, you should at least follow what is common. And the basic thing in both these scriptures that there's one God, he has got no image, he has got no idol, and Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of this Almighty God, the last and final messenger. So I would tell you, initially follow both. And after that, your scripture says that follow the last and final messenger, that means you follow the hadith of the messenger Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the last and final revelation which was given to him. So brother, do you believe that there is one God? Yes, sir. Do you, believe, do, you, do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yes, sure. 100%? 101%. MashaAllah. So these two things, <laughs> these two things, brother, are sufficient for you to enter the fold of Islam. To enter the fold of Islam. And after that, you have to read the message and the guidance of this messenger and what was revealed to this messenger, that is the Quran and the Sai Hadith. Sir, I have another one small doubt. Can yes. you, uh, may I question? Brother, but do you believe there is one God? Do you believe Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a messenger of God? Yes, sir. These two are sufficient for you to enter the school of Islam. Sure. Thank Doubts you, will always be there. Okay then, thank you. No, but I'm asking the question, do you believe in these two things? Yes. Do you have some doubt that before that you want to yes, ask? Yes, okay, I, do, I do want to ask one more question. Okay, ask one more question, brother. Yeah. In Islam, it is stated that uh, there is no idol worship, okay? That is number one. Whereas, in India, I see people who are uh, doing on this, uh, what you call, uh, dargas, performing all types of pujas, like Indians, Hindus, okay? What is your answer for this? Brother, you are a Hindu, you told me. Yes. You know that mentioned in your scripture, idol worship is wrong. Yes. Yes. Yet in India, I know millions of Hindus do idol worship. Yes. That means they are not following the scripture. Similarly, I agree with you, there are many Muslims in India who are not following Quran and Hadith. That, that is... That is my question. That is my that, question. That is my answer. As, as that, a... that is my answer. Like Hindus are not following the scriptures, there are many Muslims who are not following the scripture. Any Muslim who breaks any law of the Quran or any commandment of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is not a practicing Muslim. So Thank that, you for your kind answer, sir. But brother, I want to tell you that you want to be a practicing Hindu? No. Yes? No. Practicing means you believe that Almighty God does not have any idols? Yeah, I do accept that there is no idol worship. And you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yes. So do you want to enter into the fall of Islam? Yes, please. Brother, is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? 
Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? Nothing, sir. I have come on my own. MashaAllah. So doing out of a free will? 101 person. MashaAllah. So inshallah, I will, I will say in Arabic and repeat it, inshallah. Sure. Go ahead. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness. That. That. There is no God. There is no God. But Allah. But Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That. That. Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad is, is the messenger of Allah. The messenger of Allah. MashaAllah, you're a Muslim and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide you more <laughs> and give you the best in this world and the akhirah. Do we have a non-Muslim on the other mic of the sisters? If we have a non-Muslim of the sisters mic at the rear, just mention and you can go ahead with the question. Good evening. Uh, I'm Sarita Mary. Uh, I work in private company as administration manager and uh, I wish to take up Islam and <laughs> it's only because of two men in my life that is uh, I wish to marry a Muslim man and uh, I see him every day uh, the way he talks to people and his simplicity and uh, he's very religious. The second person will be Mr. Zakir. Uh, that is because I'm watching his speech and it is very informative to know about all the religion. Before I could take up Islam, I have one query to clarify by your end. That is, how is Mother Mary, that is Mary, mother of Jesus, is described in Quran? Mashallah, sister is impressed with Islam by seeing a person who's religious and seeing my tapes. The only query is that how is Mother Mary described in Islam and what is the status? If you compare what is mentioned about Mother Mary, may Allah be pleased with her in the Quran as well as the Bible, in the Quran there is a full chapter, a full surah called as Maryam on the name of the mother of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, Maryam. If you read all the books in the Bible, whether the Old Testament or New Testament, whether the 66 books of the Protestants or 73 books of the Catholics, there is not a single book which is named after Mary. But there is a full chapter in the Quran called as Maryam. May Allah be pleased with her. And if you refer and analyze the story of the birth of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, mentioned in the Bible and mentioned in the Quran. Both are different. Overall, they are the same, but minute points if you note. For example, if you read the Bible, it says that when Archangel Gabriel comes and asks Mother Mary that you shall have a son, so she replies, how shall I have a son where I knoweth not a man? Knoweth not a man means sexually. Same thing in the Quran. If you read in the Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 42, 247, where Mother Mary, Mary Mir Salam, she says that how shall I have a son when no man has touched me? So Archangel Gabriel replies, Kun Fayakun, when Allah decrees a matter and says to it be, and it is. So in the Quran it says when Mother Mary questions that how shall I have a son when no man has touched me? That means no man has touched her sexually. So Archangel Gabriel replies, when Allah decrees a matter, and says to it be and it is in the bible archangel gabriel replies that the holy spirit will come unto thee so when a person has to think that what will the holy spirit come on to mary and do what so it lets your mind wander it lets your mind wonder what will the holy spirit come unto mother mary and do the meaning 
is the same it means that without any male intervention jesus christ peace be upon him was born but the way the quran describes is more sublime is more divine and is much more palatable as compared to the bible so if you read in the quran allah says in surah al-imran chapter 3 verse 42 allah says that the angels came and told that allah has chosen thee to mother mary and chosen thee above the women of all nations so the honor given to Maryam alayhi salam in the quran is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that she is the chosen woman above the women of all nations imagine the quran is being revealed in arabic to the arabs and at that time the arabs and jews did not get along well the quran says a jewish woman the mother of jesus christ peace be upon him mother mary has been honored as the woman chosen above all the other women imagine muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is giving the message to the arabs and is actually antagonizing them that the jewish woman is chosen above the arab woman he did not say that his wife khatija may allah be pleased with her was the chosen woman or his daughter fatima may allah be pleased with her the chosen woman he could not because Allah says that's a revelation from Allah he has to repeat it he says in the Quran that mother Mary is the chosen woman above the women of all nations so the respect given in the Quran to mother Mary is far superior even than the Bible hope that answers the question sister sister hope that answers the question I'll just request the earlier sister who asked the question the sister who asked the earlier question about mother mary gone and she's taken her oath already oh, mashallah we have any non-muslims on any of the mics of the sisters okay we have one in the right hand side go ahead sister salam alaikum ji i am a hindu amuta ramesh uh, i'm a diploma engineering asking this question Hindu believes their religion, Muslim believes their religion, but when both are meeting, Hindu will not trying to convert in Hindu, but the Muslims, why do they are trying to convert in Muslims? Sister, if I understood the question correctly, when Hindus meet Muslim, they don't try and convert the Muslims to Hinduism, correct? Yeah. But when the Muslims meet the Hindus, they try and convert the Hindus to Muslim, correct? Correct. Sister, it is like giving an example. There is a student who goes to school. Maybe he's in the 7th standard or 8th standard. There's another student who goes to postgraduate college. Postgraduate college maybe he's doing his masters now when they meet will the school student try and teach the postgraduate or the postgraduate will teach the school student <laughs> sister yes. will, will the school going student teach the postgraduate student or the postgraduate student will teach the school going student sister I asked you a simple question, not a difficult question. Sister, have you understood my question? Yeah, yeah. So will a student going to school, will teach a student going to a senior college, postgraduate college? Or no. will a student going to postgraduate college, will teach a student going to the school? Postgraduate only. Correct. So in comparison, when the Muslims, what we believe, we are postgraduates. So when we meet, our younger brother who went to school, it's our duty to share knowledge. We don't want to be selfish. I don't want to be selfish. You know, those who are selfish, yeah, the person should not be a graduate. You know, let him suffer. Let him be in school only. If he comes to college, postgraduate, he may take my job away. Those are selfish people. We, mashallah, we are selfless. It's our duty to spread the message of truth. So when we meet, a non-Muslim, whether Hindu, whether Christian, whether Buddhist, 
we tell Tala Vila Kalmitum Sava and Baina Baina Kum. Come to common terms and we try and educate them. We don't want to degrade them. We try and educate them so that they can become a postgraduate. And both of us will get a good job, you know. The good job is going to Jannah. So we don't alone want to go to Jannah. We want to take our brothers and sisters to Jannah. Sister, do you want to go to Jannah? Do you want to go to paradise? Jannah. Do you want to go to paradise? No. Do you want to go to paradise, yes or no? I want to go to heaven only. Heaven, yes. He another name for heaven is paradise. There are some rules and regulations to go to heaven. As I mentioned in my earlier answer, according to the Hindu scriptures, according to the Quran, according to the Bible, if you want to go to heaven, you have to believe there is one God. You have to believe he has got no images, he has got no photograph, he has got no idols. Sister, do you believe in one God? Yeah, I believe Hindu only. You believe in Hindu God? Do you believe that God has got idols? No, God is not idol. So do you believe in idol worship? Idol worship, I am believing also. You believe in idol worship? Yes. So if God doesn't have idol, why are you worshipping the idol? Aren't you going against your Hindu scriptures? Your Hindu scripture says in Sveta Svetara Upanishad chapter 4 verse number 19 and Yajurubhai chapter 32 verse number 3 Na Tasrapati Me Asti Of that God, there is no image, there is no photograph, there is no painting, there is no statue, there is no sculpture, there is no idol. So do you want to follow your Hindu scriptures or you don't want to follow your Hindu scriptures? No, I want to follow my culture only, Hindu only. Culture, not your religion. My religion is Hindu only, I want to follow. But your Hindu religion is based on Vedas. Have you read the Vedas, sister? No. Isn't your duty you have to read the Vedas? When will you read it? Tomorrow? Or tonight? <laughs> I don't know. I will try. I, I request you, sister, read the Vedas tonight. No, Tom but... No, but why you can't read it at night? You can read at night, sister. No problem. Veda and Quran, you can read day, you can read night. No problem. My request to you, sister, go home. Go on the internet. Type the references I gave. Yajurve, chapter 32, verse number 3. Sveta Setar Upanishad, chapter 4, verse number 19. You know, in Kishan Ganj, I gave a talk. In Kishan Ganj. Just two weeks back and it was a three-day program first day it was a talk second day open question and session only third day was talk and question on second day and the deadline in india is 10 o'clock on supreme court but when 10 o'clock was over one intellectual hindu came and told you know dr zakir what are you trying to do you're talking about communal harmony what are you trying to convert and blah 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 i believe in i only believe in bhagavad gita i don't believe in veda i wanted to answer him but the time was up. So I told him, when you come tomorrow, inshallah, I will give you the first chance. The next day, when I gave him the first chance to ask the question, he said, full night, I did research. I phoned the scholars of Hinduism, the pundits, and I was shocked that they said that whatever you told, 100% was correct. In Hinduism, there is one God. Hindu scriptures speak about Prophet Muhammad's peace be upon him. He said, I could not sleep the full night. So he made my job easier. So I'm requesting you, sister, that tonight you go home. If you don't have any pundit to ask, you can Google, you know. Shake Google, we say shake Google. A pundit Google, go there, type all the references, try and find out, and tomorrow you can come and ask the question again, sister. Inshallah. Thank you. Do we have a non-Muslim from the brother's mic on this side? Yes, go ahead. Good evening, doctor. Greetings to you. I'm a Hindu. My name is Sandeep. And uh, I've been uh, watching your videos on YouTube since long time. Uh, being a Hindu, I do respect other religions. I do uh, respect Allah, Prophet Muhammad. I started my school uh, in my childhood in a Catholic school where I was taught about Bible and Christianity and Lord Jesus. And uh, later on, uh, after fifth standard, I came to know about my own religion, being born in Hindu family. And today, I do, uh, at times, 
get attracted towards uh, other religions. Okay, there is some common link between all religions. I have a basic question to you, doctor. Basically, I am from the science background, a pharmacy guy. Today, I am authorized a financial consultant. So, today, what I look out there in the market is uh, many religions exist on planet Earth. If human being is the same, if human organs are the same, if the human body system follows the same heartbeats, blood flow, the same blood, the same ears, the same nose, if everything is the same, the creator has to be the same, the supreme power is the same. So if the supreme power is the same, why do so many religions exist on earth today? What is going to be future now onwards? Because if I go as per theoretical books, as per history, before thousands of years, Hinduism existed, then came uh, Lord Jesus, then uh, Prophet Muhammad, and now today, what I see in front of my eyes is there are many religions and every religion has its own pros and cons. So, being a human, I get confused. I am a Hindu, I should uh, respect my religion, as well as being a human being, I should respect other religions. So what is the final truth and what is going to the future for centuries ahead? The brother has asked a very good question that there are so many different religions more than 4,000 years back was Hinduism, then Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, came 2,000 years back or Christianity, then Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came 1,400 years back. Some things are similar, some things are contradicting. There's so much of God, our creator is one. Human body is the same, creator has to be same. So why this confusion? It's a very good question. The reply is given in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse number 19. It says, in Nadina in the Lail Islam, the only religion acceptable in the sight of God is Islam. That is peace acquired by submitting a will to God. Almighty God only gave one religion to the human beings. As I said earlier, Almighty God has only sent one religion But he has sent many messengers When he sent messengers who got messages By the passage of time the message got changed Again a new messenger came He bought a fresh message Again the people changed it again a new messenger came it happened for many years down the ages But all the messengers bought the basic message was the same Almighty God, the last and final message was the Quran. Now you will ask me this question, that why did God reveal the Quran 1400 years back? Why didn't he reveal the Quran directly? Reveal the Quran directly? No confusion. You know, my son, he wants to become a doctor. He tells me, Father, Abba, why do you put me into nursery, then junior KG, senior KG, first standard? Why you put me in school? Directly put me into medical college. I said, son, if you want to be a doctor, first you have to go to nursery, pre-primary, primary school, secondary school, medical college, then you become a doctor. You can't directly enter a medical college because you won't understand. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is our creator, he knows very well that human being would not be able to grasp the complete message of the Quran if it was revealed earlier. 1400 years ago, Almighty God, who's our creator, he knows this time, the time has come where human beings can understand the message. So that's the reason previously he sent messages which were there but not complete because human beings could not understand, could not grasp. As the message changed, he sent a new message, a new messenger. That's the reason all the messages that came before the Quran, they were meant for a particular group of people and meant to be followed for a particular time period. All the messengers that came before the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, were only sent for a particular group of people and was meant to be followed till a new message came. Almighty God, He knew 1400 years ago, was the time when human beings can understand the final message of the Quran. He revealed it. And he sent the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Since Quran was the last and final message, it was not only meant for the Muslims or the Arabs, it wasn't meant for one particular group of people, it was meant for the whole of humanity. All the messengers that came before were meant for a particular group of people, 
and the message was supposed to be followed for a particular time period. Because Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the last and final messenger, he was not sent only for the Muslims or the Arabs, he was sent for the whole of humanity. But now today, you ask me, why are there different religions? Our creator sent only one religion. We human beings kept on changing. But even in the corrupted form, I have a formula. I have a formula which will not antagonize any human being. I tell all these human beings, at least believe that there is one scripture which is 100% the word of God. So the Hindus would not mind agreeing, I believe Veda to be 100% word of God. The Christians would say, I do not mind believing Bible to be 100% the word of God. The Muslim will say, I don't mind believing Quran to be 100% the word of God. So I tell them, okay, now let us agree to follow what is common in all these scriptures. What is different, we'll discuss tomorrow. Let's not fight over the differences. Let us agree to follow what is common and at least we'll be sure that what is common in all the three scriptures, this at least minimum is 100% the word of God. What is different may be the word of God, may not be the word of God, that we can discuss tomorrow. Now when we do a research, and I being a student of comparative religion, I have studied the Vedas, I have studied the Upanishads, Bhagavad Gita, Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, Quran. Now when I do research, I have come to know that all these scriptures say that there is one God. All the scriptures say that God has got no image, has got no photograph, no painting, no statue, no idol. All the scriptures say that Almighty God does not beget nor is he begotten. All the scriptures say that the last and final messenger to come is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I have quoted in this session many verses from Hindu scripture that Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger. I have quoted from the Bible. I have quoted from the Quran. So at least let us agree to follow what is common. Bible, Vedas, Quran, all three say that you should not have alcohol. And I've quoted that in my earlier answer. All three say that you should not gamble. All three say that you should not have pork. So let us agree to follow what is common. So you have to agree that there's one God. You have to believe Prophet Muhammad is the final messenger of God. You should not have alcohol. You should not have pork. To pray, we have to do the sujood. All these are common points. So I'm asking the question that if you say you are a Hindu and you say that you respect other religions, I'm asking the question, do you believe that there's one God? As per books, I do. Do you believe that idol worship is prohibited? That's a confusing area. It's very clear in the Hindu scriptures. Yajurve chapter 32 verse number 3, Na Tasripati Ma Asti, of that God there is no Pratima, there is no photograph, no painting, no image, no idol, no statue. Same thing is repeated in Sveta Sveta Upanishad, chapter number 4, verse number 19. Na Asti, of that God there is no Pratima, no image, no photograph, no painting, no statue, no idol. What's confusing, brother? I mean, uh, today my knowledge is uh, just like an uh, infant. No, no, your knowledge is like infant. When a person of knowledge talks, you should believe it. True. So why don't you believe it then? No, as I said, I do respect uh, Prophet Muhammad. I do. No respect. Respecting is one thing, following is the other thing. If you respect a person, you have to follow his guidance. So Only again, the question goes in the same direction what I was uh, asking to you, that if I am a Hindu, if I believe in Hinduism, but still, when I step out of my home, I have to follow my colleagues, the other society members, uh, human beings on the earth. Is it a must? Suppose the other society members start robbing. If your other human beings start robbing, even you start robbing. Brother, if your friends start robbing, will you rob? I will have to defend myself. Will you rob, yes or no? If somebody is robbing me. No, no, you said that you have to follow the other human beings, other society. If your other friends start robbing other people, will you start robbing? Will you rob others? I don't think so. there is a point in robbing others. Okay, because you know robbing is wrong. So that time you will not follow society. Follow the society when it is right. Do not follow when it's wrong. God has given you grey matter, brain. Correct? So if your Hindu friends are going against the Veda, will you follow Veda or your Hindu friends? They have to follow what is written in the books.
Yes, forget about them. I'm asking about you. If your Hindu scripture says don't do idol worship, will you do idol worship? No, then I will not. So now do you believe idol worship is wrong? Again, as I said, I have to study more. I'm not clear. No, but you study when you study today or tomorrow when? <laughs> Maybe today or tomorrow. Okay, fine. I've quoted so many references from the Hindu scripture about Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yes, I do. If you believe, don't you have to follow his commandments? I may have to. Why may? Again, I'm not If you here. may believe in, then you may. If you do believe in, you do have to follow. It's simple English. If you say, maybe he's a messenger of God, then you can say, maybe I'll follow him. When you say, surely the messenger of God, then you have to follow him, surely, why? But is Will a messenger of God deceive you? But again, do I have to be a Muslim to follow Prophet Muhammad? No, no, Islam? you have to be a good Hindu also. You have to be a good Hindu and a good Christian to follow Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's where the whole uh, thing If goes. you are not a good Hindu, if you are not a good Christian, you will never follow Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because Hindu scripture says, the Antim Rishi, the Kalki Autar is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I gave references, you know, if you want I can give again. Do you want me to give the references again of Prophet Muhammad in the Hindu scriptures? I did listen to your references. I need to go through them. Fine. So inshallah go today. Tomorrow, I would give you the first chance. And there's a lady there. You too, I would give the first chance. Then I will call you a truthful person. Go today, Google, check on the net. I gave at least 100 references. There are more than 100 in my lecture. If you see on Hindu scriptures, talking about Prophet Muhammad talking about one God, talking not to have alcohol, not to have pork, not to gamble. What is different we'll discuss tomorrow. At least what is common we should agree. So when you are talking about getting human beings together, I'm giving you a formula which will not offend you. I'm not telling you follow that which is not mentioned in the Hindu scripture. I'm telling you follow what is mentioned in the Hindu scripture and the Quran. 100% you will be a good Hindu, good Christian, and even enter into Islam may not be good Muslim, at least enter and then your scripture says you have to follow the guidance of the last messenger, you have to follow the Quran. So if you follow the Quran correctly and the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad you will be a good Muslim. And I'm waiting that inshallah if we can do it today, tomorrow inshallah we can interact. Thank you very much doctor. We'll go to the front mic for the brothers on the right hand side. I believe we have a non-Muslim brother. Greetings to Dr. Zaki Naik and all my brothers and sisters here in the name of our Lord Creator. Well, it's an honor to meet you, sir, Dr. Zaki Naik. Well, my name is Mahesh and I work as a customer service officer in Dubai and I'm a born again Christian. My question, sir, today is how confident is Islam that it is not deceived by Satan or the Jal that Jesus was crucified for all our sins. But the Mahesh has asked a question that how confident is Islam that it's not deceived by Satan and Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was not crucified. Brother, Islam means peace acquired by submitting a will to God and anyone who submits his will to God he is a Muslim as far as our creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is concerned he has ilm e he has knowledge of the future Allah says in the Quran very clearly in Surah Nisa chapter number 4 verse number 157 Allah says that they boasted the Jews that we killed Jesus the son of Mary Allah says, وَمَا قَتَلُهُ وَمَا صَلُبُهُ They killed him not, neither did they crucify him. وَلَاكِنْ شُبِّيَا لَهُمْ And anyone who differs is full of doubts. إِلَّا تِبَا زَن Which only conjectures to follow. وَمَا قَتَلُهُ يَقِينَا For assuredly they killed him not. So Quran is very explicit, confident, without a single doubt, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was not killed, neither was he crucified. It was only made to appear so. All those who differ are full of doubt. As far as I being a Muslim is concerned, 
I am 100% confident because Quran says that. But to make you also confident, I can prove it to you from your Bible. That Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, wasn't crucified. So that you will come to know it is not the Muslims who are deceived. It is the so-called Christians who believe that Jesus was crucified, peace be upon him, are deceived. If you read the Bible, it's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 38, that people come to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, ask him, O oh Lord, O oh Master, show us wonders and miracles and signs. People came and asked Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, show us signs, show us miracle to prove that a messenger of God. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he says, you evil and adulterous generation, you seek it after a sign, no sign shall be given to you except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, puts all his eggs in one basket. He does not say that I will show you the miracle, you know that I gave life to the dead, I heal those who are born lepers, he puts all his eggs in one basket and says, I shall give you no sign but the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, to know the sign of Jonah, you have to go to the Bible and there's a book by the name of Book of Jonah. It is less than two sides in the Bible. And if you have read the Bible, you know, that Almighty God commands his prophet Jonah that to go to Nineveh. Now, Jonah being a prophet of God, he says that people of Nineveh, how will you understand? He takes a ship to Joppa. Now, while he's going, there's a storm at sea. And there was a superstition at that time that anyone who doesn't obey the commandment of his master, because of that, a storm will come. So Jonah, being a prophet of God, he owns up and volunteers that I am the person who has disobeyed my master. So because he owns up, at that time, it was a custom, it was a superstition, that if you throw the person overboard who is disobeying his master, then the storm will calm. Jonah, being a prophet of God, he volunteers. So they don't have to tie his legs, they don't have to tie his feet. They throw him overboard in the storm. I'm asking a question, brother. When Jonah was thrown overboard from the ship into the sea, was Jonah dead or alive? Brother, I'm asking you the question. Was Jonah dead or alive when he was thrown overboard in the sea? Yeah, I, I got your question, but... I'm, I, you got my question, you haven't given my answer. According to you in the Bible, when Jonah was thrown overboard, was he dead or alive? Well, it is out of my question, so if you can. I am giving the, point. the answer to your question. I am answering your question. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, He puts all his eggs in one basket. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. I am answering your question. Why aren't you answering my question? Was Jonah dead or alive? Well, I am pretty much not sure with that. And so you haven't read the Bible? I've been reading. I've I have not come across a single Christian who does not know the book of Jonah. He may not know the other parts of the Bible because this you even learn in Sunday school. Even a small child knows the story of Jonah. How come you don't know? Sir, I appreciate your effort that you're answering, but this I'm is ask, taking... I'm yes. asking the question. If you have read the Bible, if you know your Bible, was yes. Jonah dead or if you don't know your Bible, then what is the use of me talking from your Bible? A simple question like 2 plus 2 is equal to how much? And you cannot reply, that means you're afraid of the truth. No, sir. Was Jonah dead or alive? Dead or alive? Either say dead or either say alive. What are we? No, I cannot guess, but if you're sure with the Bible, please go ahead. Okay, so you don't know? Yeah, please. You go don't ahead. know, you don't want to answer. I don't want to answer, but want you to answer, please. Ah, correct. Why? Why you don't, are you afraid? Two plus two is equal to how much, brother? Four exactly. Four exactly you can say. 
Jonah was dead or alive, you don't know. When he was thrown overboard, was he dead or alive, you know the answer, but don't want to answer. Why? Are you afraid of the truth? I feel the devil is deceiving you now. Huh? No, the devil cannot deceive. Oh, devil cannot deceive you. Why? Because I believe in Christ, the Lord Jesus. You do not know the sign of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. You do not know the Bible. How do you believe in Jesus Christ? I love Jesus Christ more than you. Do you know that? I follow his commandment more than you. You only theoretically are saying, I know the commandments of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him in the Bible. You don't know. So who's a better believer in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him? You or me? A person who follows the commandment of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is a better believer or a person who does not? I think we are going apart from the question. I'm not going can... apart. The devil is deceiving you. I want to take the devil away from you. The devil is saying, don't answer. If you answer, you'll get caught. If you answer, then you'll get close to the truth. No, sir. My question was to look at a view from Islam, if how confident they were. 100% confident. How confident are you? You are not confident that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was crucified. That's the reason even after knowing the answer, you're not answering. It is devilish. If you ask me a question, if I know the answer and I'm not answering, that means I'm afraid of the truth. Why are you afraid of the truth when Jesus Christ is with you? When Jesus Christ is with you, why are you afraid of the truth? I'm I know you know the answer. I know you know the answer. And I know that if you answer, you will get exposed that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was not crucified. Let, me be, let me be honest. I really don't know the answer, but would look forward to have your explanation. Do sir. you know about the sign of Jonah? Have you heard about the story of Jonah? Yes, I did. Do you know that he was thrown overboard? Yes, but... When he was thrown, was he dead or alive? I can guess maybe he was dead. When he was thrown? Where did you read this? In which Bible? As I told you. I challenge you, you show me any verse in the Bible which says that Jonah was dead when he was thrown alive, I'll accept Christianity. <laughs> Your devil is not even allowing you to answer the truth. I challenge you, open the book of Jonah. It says that Jonah was alive. So why are you giving the wrong answer? Doesn't your Bible say that Jonah prayed in the belly of the fish? Was he dead when he prayed or was he alive when he was praying? He must be alive. So why are you saying dead? I was not sure with the book of Jonah, sir. I have not met a single Christian who doesn't know this answer. You know the answer, but purposely you are deviating because you don't love Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. I'll go ahead with the story. When Jonah was thrown overboard, he had to be alive. Then there's a storm. In the storm, when a human being is thrown, he ought to die. He does not die. Because that's a miracle. If he dies, it's no miracle. If he does not die, it's a miracle. A fish comes and gobbles him up. A fish comes and swallows him up. A person ought to die, but Jonah is alive. Peace be upon him. If he dies, it's not a miracle. He's alive, it's a miracle. Three days and three nights, the fish takes prophet Jonah around the sea. A person ought to die. Does he die or not? As you told, he's alive. That because if he has to pray, he has to be alive to pray. Yes. Dead men don't pray. He was alive. So it's a miracle of a miracle of a miracle. Later on, the fish vomits him out onto the shore. When the fish vomits prophet Jonah, was he dead or alive? Alive. Alive. Alive, 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 alive. A miracle of a miracle of a miracle of a miracle. Now Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said that as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. I'm asking the question, when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, when he was taken down from the cross, and when he was put in the sepulcher, in the grave, was Jesus Christ dead or alive? He was dead. That means Jesus Christ told a lie. He said, as Jonah was three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights. So if Jonah was alive and Jesus was dead, that means Jesus Christ lied. So do you believe Jesus Christ lied? No, sir, definitely not. So why are you going against the person who you love? I will never believe that a messenger of God can lie. That means he was dead or alive. 
It says Jonah was three days in the belly of the fish. Three days was. and three nights. Don't cut. Okay, three days and three and nights yes, in the belly quote, of the yes. fish. So shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Yes. So, in when, the Jonah, heart of the earth. so when Jonah was alive, what was Jesus Christ? Peace be upon him. So, but the main purpose is he being in the heart of the earth, which is fulfilled. The prophecy says, as Jonah was, how was Jonah dead or alive? He was alive, as we told. So Jesus Christ also has to be alive. Plain, simple reading. Why are you following the devil's footstep? Simple, if Jonah was alive, Jesus Christ has to be alive, peace be upon him. If you say he was dead, that means you are saying Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, lied. That means he's not a man of God. So the prophecy says that so as Jonah, he shall be three days in the belly of the earth. Three days and three nights. Why are you cutting, brother? Okay. You don't know English? Okay, I'm not cutting. Let it take it as three days and three nights. Yes, very good. But uh, Dr. Zakir Naik... Okay, okay you... wait, wait. Do you know the Bible? When was Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, put on the cross? Which day was it? It was on Friday. Friday when? When was it taken down? At night. At night. Friday night. Correct? So he was put in the sepulchre when? Maybe at night. Friday night. Correct. Mm -hmm. When was the tomb empty? When did Mary Magdalene found the tomb empty? Sunday. What time? Morning, afternoon, evening? Well, at night, I guess. Morning. Sunday morning? Yes. Okay. So if you count, Friday night, he was in the tomb. One night. Saturday morning, full day he was in the tomb. One night, one day. Saturday night, he was there. Two nights and one day. Does two nights and one day equal to three days and three nights? Technically, no, sir. So technically, why are you telling Jesus Christ is a liar? Peace be upon him. No, Billah. So technically, you are calling Jesus Christ a liar. No, sir, but I... No, sir, no, sir, no, sir, 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 here. Why are you accusing my beloved prophet Jesus Christ? Peace be upon him. I wouldn't like anyone accusing my prophet to be a liar. Once, twice. Why? Because I don't see a valid reason why they have to make it false of Jesus' crucifixion. You are making false, sins. not I. Quran is very clear. He was not crucified, neither was he killed. Even in the Bible, he was put on the cross, but he did not die on the cross. Crucifixion means the person should die on the cross. C-R-U-C-I-F-I-X-I-O-N. But a new word has to be coined. He was put on the cross, but did not die. It's called as crucifixion. C -R -U -C -I F I C T I O N. It's a fiction. So if he dies, it's called as crucifixion. If he does not die, it's a fiction. It's a story. So if you read the Bible, in the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, did not die on the cross. If he dies, that means he's lying. So if you say he died, that means he's a liar. I would prefer calling my prophet as a truthful person rather than a liar. So what you're talking is the teachings of the church, of your priest. You are more bothered about following your priest than following the messenger of Allah. For you, the teachings of the church is more important than the teachings of the Bible. So to fulfill the teachings of your church, you are calling Prophet Jesus a liar. I would not like to call my prophet a liar, brother. Do you understand English? Yes, so do I. So you have to agree that Jesus was alive. And Jesus wasn't crucified, everything is matching. What you're talking is the teaching of the church, not the Bible. So, but as sir, you but think for a redemption of sin, why would one want to lie about the crucifixion of Jesus? But where did Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, say that he will redeem people's sin? Quote me any one verse in the Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that he is God or worship me. Nowhere does it say. In fact, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, 
in the gospel of matthew chapter number five verse number 7 to 20 that unless your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scars and the pharisees you shall never enter the kingdom of heaven so if you want to go to heaven you have to follow all the rules and laws and commandments of the old testament yes so old testament says god is one it doesn't say three in one who says god has got no image god has got no idol yet many of the catholics they do idol worship they make an image of jesus christ peace be upon him it clearly says that when a person came to jesus christ peace be upon him in the gospel of matthew chapter number 19 verse number 16 17 that a man approaches jesus christ peace be upon him asks him that good master what good things should i do so that i enter eternal life so jesus christ peace be upon him replies why thou callest me good there's only one good and that is almighty god if you want to enter eternal life, you keep the commandments. He never said you believe that I'm God. He never said you believe that I died on the cross for your sins. That is the teaching of Paul, not of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Paul says in Corinthians and all that believe in Jesus. Where did Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, say? He said that if you want to go to heaven, you keep the commandments. So are you going to follow Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, or somebody else? Jesus Christ. And so where did name. Jesus say that you have to believe that I died for your sin? Show me one quotation where he himself said it. So in Matthew, I'm not sure with the verses, but he says about the loss, he has come to fulfill the loss. If someone comes to fulfill the loss, does it mean that he died for his sins? If I have come to fulfill your loss, if you don't understand, I'm trying to fulfill your loss. That doesn't mean I become God. That doesn't mean that I've come to die for your sin. Yes, he came to guide the people. And even I believe in that. Where does it say that he died for your sins? Sir, so like John 3.16 says that for God so loved the world, he gave him one and only son, Lord Jesus. What you're quoting is Gospel of John chapter 3 verse number 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him shall not die but have everlasting life. Do you know this word begotten yes, is extrapolation? Sir. It's a fabrication. It's a concoction according to the Revised Standard Edition of the Bible. The Revised Standard Version of the Bible, revised by Thaidu Christian scholars of the highest eminence. It says this word begotten is interpolation. It's a fabrication. It's a concoction. And they're thrown out of the Bible. So this word begotten is a fabrication and again for God so of the world that he gave his only begotten son whosoever believeth in him shall have ever life. you have to believe in him not believing Paul so where is the problem where am I saying don't believe in him even I believe in him I follow him Jesus Christ peace be upon him was circumcised brother are you circumcised no. I'm circumcised who's following Jesus you or me Who's following Jesus? Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said we have to follow the Old Testament. It's mentioned in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse number 18, don't have alcohol. It's mentioned in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 20, verse number 1, don't be drunk with alcohol. Brother, do you have alcohol? No, sir. You have alcohol? No. Mashallah, this part you're following. Brother, do you have pork? Yes, I do. It's mentioned in the book of Leviticus, chapter number 11, verse number 7 and 8, not to have pork. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 8, not to have pork. In the book of Isaiah, chapter number 65, verse number 2 to 5, don't have pork. You have pork, I don't have pork. Who's following Jesus more, you or me? So, but in New Testament... But I'm asking the question, you are following Jesus more or me? So you forgot to quote another verse in New Testament. I'm not sure with the verse numbers. But it says, what you have with your mouth doesn't defile your body. And it was from Jesus. But where does it say that you should have pork? Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 7 to 20. It says, if you want to enter the kingdom of heaven, you have to follow all the laws and commandments of the Old Testament. Same thing. What you have doesn't defile. That does not overrule that you should not follow the laws and commandments of the Old Testament. Where does it say? Jesus Christ, peace be cannot contradict. If you break one jot or tittle, Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, verse number 7 to 20, I've come not to destroy. I've come not to destroy, but to fulfill. 
Anyone who breaks one of the least commandments, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever shall keep the commandments and teach men to do so will be called get in the kingdom of heaven. Unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, in no way shall you enter the kingdom of heaven. So here Jesus is telling, even if you break one jot or tittle from the Old Testament, you shall not enter Jannah. You shall not enter paradise. So where did Jesus Christ say that you have to have pork? Well, sir, as I told you, he again mentions that it doesn't defile your body what goes does it talk mind. about pork no sir but it's clearly mentioned in the gospel of matthew chapter 5 verse number 720 if you don't understand english it's whose problem your problem or my problem in the bible book of leviticus chapter 11 verse 7 to 8 book of deuteronomy chapter 14 verse number 8 in the book of isaiah chapter 65 verse number 2 to 5 says you should not have pork so if i don't have pork am i following jesus can better than you or not Sir, I also follow New Testament. Even I follow New Testament. Nowhere does the New Testament say, nowhere does Jesus Christ, peace be upon, say in the New Testament to have pork. Where does it say? Give me the reference. He, in specific, doesn't tell to have pork. I want to follow specific. When specific Old Testament says you should not have, never will Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, contradict anything from the Old Testament. If he contradicts, that means he's lying in Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse number 17. Because he says, I've come not to destroy the law of the prophets. I've come not to destroy, but to fulfill. Fulfill means follow everything of the Old Testament. So why do you want to make Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, a liar? No, sir. I definitely not tell him. So a please liar. go back home. Read. Stop having pork. Stop having alcohol. Believe in one God. Don't do idol worship. Believe in the messenger of God and not God. And that will take the devil out of you, inshallah. Hope that answers the question. God bless you, sir, everyone. Do we have another non-Muslim from the sisters on either of the mics? Yes, we have one on the right-hand side. Go ahead, sister. Um, hi, my name is Munira. And I was born from different nationalities and religion. My mom was Christian and my father was Muslim. But my father wasn't there near me when I needed to learn Islam. So my mom made me Christian. She taught me what she could. But I still don't know what to choose. My father is Muslim and I have to be a Muslim, but no one is forcing me. I just want to know about a Muslim. Sister asked a question that a father was a Muslim. Do you have a question, sister? My mother says that in heaven, uh, by Muslim, uh, men get 72 women. Good. Um, hur. But in hur. <laughs> but uh, in in Christian, we go to heaven with our family. And I want to know what kind of heaven in Muslim for women. Sister said that the father was a Muslim, mother is a Christian. That the mother brought you up, correct? Yeah. So do you interact with the father or don't you interact with the father? Do you interact with the to father? my or mother. No? So you live with your mother, not with the father? No. The sister said, father is a Muslim, mother is a Christian, but mother has brought her up. She lives more with the mother and mother made her a Christian. So now she's confused. Mother said that Muslims go to heaven, then they get 72 poor, 72 women, the men, what will the woman get? And yes. if, so as far as your first question, your second question I'll answer first and then come back to your first question. As far as the question is concerned, that if the men go to heaven, they'll get 72 poor, that beautiful woman, what will the woman get? The same question was asked to Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be with her, who's the wife of the Prophet. So the wife of the Prophet replied that the woman will get that which your heart hasn't desired what your eyes haven't seen, what your ear hasn't heard about. That means, inshallah, you'll get something equal. What your heart hasn't desired, what your eyes hasn't seen, what your ear hasn't heard. So, inshallah, if you go to heaven, you will get something good, which, inshallah, you'll be satisfied. But the question is, first you have to enter heaven. If you don't enter heaven, you won't get that something which is good. And the criteria, what you are saying, that your mother is a Christian, father is a Muslim, you are confused. My formula which I gave to the brother earlier, it's even applicable to you. At least follow what is common in both the religion. 
what is common in both the scriptures the quran and the bible at least follow that nowhere does the bible says that jesus is god sister do you believe jesus is god no very good because nowhere does the bible say there's not a single unequivocal statement in the complete bible where jesus christ peace be upon himself says that i am god always says worship me fine what we believe islam is the only non-christian faith which makes an article of faith to believe in jesus christ peace be upon him so you have to believe in jesus christ but we believe he was one of the mightiest messengers of god bible says that god is one jesus christ peace be upon him said it's mentioned in the gospel of mark chapter number 12 verse number 29 it says shama israelu adnahin wa adnaikhad that you are israel the lord our god is one lord if you read the bible it's mentioned about the prophecy of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophecy of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is also mentioned in the old testament as well as new testament time will not permit me to give all the details and only give you the references it's mentioned in the book of deuteronomy chapter number 18 verse number 18 about the coming of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the book of deuteronomy chapter number 18 verse number 19 in the book of isaiah chapter number 29 verse number 12 in the song of solomon chapter number 5 verse number 16 prophet muhammad is mentioned my name peace be upon him he is even prophesied in the new testament in the gospel of john chapter number 14 verse number 16 in the gospel of john chapter 15 verse number 26 in the gospel of john chapter number 16 verse number 7 in many places i'll just give you one reference gospel of john chapter number 16 verse number 12 to 14 says i have many things to say unto you but he cannot bear them now for he when the spirit of truth shall come he shall guide you unto all truth he shall not speak of himself all that he hear shall he speak he shall glorify me this prophecy refers to no one but the last and final messenger prophet muhammad peace be upon him further if you read the bible and the quran Quran says don't have alcohol chapter 5 verse number 90 Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 20 verse number 1 and the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse number 18 don't have alcohol Quran says don't have pork Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 173 Surah Maida chapter 5 verse number 3 Surah An-Nam chapter 6 verse 145 Surah Nahl chapter 16 verse number 115 four places Bible says in three places don't have pork in the book of Leviticus chapter number 11 verse number 7 and 8 in the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 14 verse number 8 in the book of Isaiah chapter 65 verse number 2 to 5 don't have pork so if you want to be a good christian and a good muslim believe in one god believe he has got no image he has got no idol believe in last and final messenger prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam don't have alcohol don't have pork don't gamble Quran says about hijab in surah nur chapter 24 verse number 30 and verse number 31 that women should be dressed up with modesty same thing in the bible book of deuteronomy chapter number 22 verse number 5 the women should not wear clothes that would pertain to a man and a man should not wear women's clothes it's mentioned in the first timothy chapter number 2 verse number 9 that women should be dressed up with sobriety with shamefacedness they should not have costly array and braided hair of gold it's mentioned in the first corinthian chapter number 11 verse number 5 and 6 the woman that uncovers the hair she dishonors the head her head should be shaved off bible is more strict than the quran nowhere does the quran say that the woman who does not cover her head head should be shaved off it's mentioned in the bible first corinthian chapter number 11 verse 5 to 6 that woman that prays to the lord and does not cover her head her head should be shaved off So if you want to be a good Christian and a good Muslim wear the hijab. If you have seen the photograph of Mother Mary, have you seen the photograph of Mother Mary? Sister, have you seen the photograph of Mother Mary? No. You haven't seen the photograph of Mother Mary? Mother Mary the mother of Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, I saw her. Didn't your mother show you? Yes. Mashallah. Do you know she's completely covered? Her complete body is covered except the face and the hands up to the wrist. Yes. So you also wear the same clothes, sister. Wear the clothes of Mother Mary. You'll be a good Christian as well as a good Muslim. So there's no confusion. At least what is common you follow. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, "I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. For he, when the Spirit of Truth will come, he shall guide you unto all truth." Talking about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now Prophet Muhammad has already come. peace be upon him to him was revealed the quran you read the quran and the authentic hadith of the last and final messenger 
you will be a very good Christian and a very good Muslim also, sister. Sister, do you believe that there's one God? Yes. Do you believe Jesus is God? No. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yes. MashaAllah, so at least you agree with the basic principles of Islam. So would you like to say the Shahada? Would you like to enter into the fold of Islam? I still have to think. No, if you believe there's one God, if you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God, if you believe Jesus is not God, you can enter. Other things you can clarify. Enter into the school, then you may learn more things. But if you're 100% sure there's one God, if you're 100% sure Jesus is not God, peace be upon him. If you're 100% sure that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God, this is the basic requirement for you to become a Muslim. And then later on you can do hijab, you can start offering salah, slowly, slowly. But if you believe in these two things, that there's no God but Allah, and you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, these two things are minimum required for you to become a Muslim. So that you can please your father also and please your mother also. Don't you want to please your father and mother both? Yes. So if you believe that there's only one God, and you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger, so why don't you want to enter the fold of Islam? Because I don't know much of it. Fine. When you enter school, you don't know what is taught in standard 10. Do you know? Yes or no? When you enter school, and you go to nursery, you learn more. As long as you agree, okay, fine. Now, when you enter school, you agree to follow the timetable of the school. You agree to follow the basic rules and then you start learning more and more so here yeah, if you agree with the basic rules that there's one God Jesus is not God is the messenger of God and Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God these are the basic requirements later on as you keep on getting more and more knowledge your practice will keep on increasing you will become a good Christian as well as a good Muslim it will take time but the basic things if you know well I feel you should enter the fold and then God will help you to follow more. Okay. Sister, do you want to accept Islam? Not right now. Fine, inshallah, go home, think about it, and get convinced. Once you're convinced, enter fast. You don't know how long will you live. It's better late than never. And you don't know how long you're gonna live, so my request to you is that go home, do more research, study more, and as soon as you're convinced, you come to the fold of Islam so that you go to paradise, you go to heaven. Otherwise, you don't go to heaven. Hope that answers the question. Just a small note for anybody who wants to ask a question but hasn't been able to, obviously because we're running out of time. We will, inshallah, have a second session tomorrow where Dr. Zakir, inshallah, will again be answering all of your questions. So remain seated, everybody. We're going to continue, inshallah, with the third day of the Dubai International Peace Convention tomorrow, beginning at 10 a.m. Inshallah, an announcement just before everybody leaves, because if you want to leave, you need to hear this announcement. When you actually leave, everyone will leave from hall number four, and inside that will take you to the free car park, which is opposite Novotel. From there, you may exit to hall number one, which goes to Rashid Tower Parking in Zarbil Car Park F. Our dear Dr. Zakir, may Allah reward him, wants to continue answering everyone's questions. So I'm going to make one short announcement. Whoever is getting home by train, the trains will be finishing shortly. So if you're catching the train, you should probably leave now. Otherwise, if you have a car, or you want to walk, stay, and inshallah, Dr. Zakir, may Allah reward him, is going to continue for a short while more. So just a reminder, if you are catching the train, you may head off now, inshallah. If you want to stay, we will be continuing. So if everybody wants to take their seat, if possible, we'll be able to continue taking a few more questions, inshallah. Okay, now I believe that we have some questions from the brother's mic on the left-hand side. Go ahead. Hello, Dr. Zucker Naik. My name is Harris. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona, in the United States. I'm an entrepreneur and a marketing manager. 
two of my friends in America have converted uh, watching YouTube videos of you. Uh, one of them a Christian, one of them an atheist. One of my friends um, presented me with how to deal with an atheist DVD of yours, which I did watch. Uh, but that didn't answer my question. And I've asked this question to a lot of people with no satisfactory answers, a lot of intelligent people. Of all the scholars that I've ever watched on YouTube, in my opinion, you are the most rational, logical, easy to understand kind of scholar that I've ever come across in my life. And it is really important that this question is answered because I've never had a satisfactory answer for this question. Uh, my question is like a coin with two sides. The first side of it is this, and this is the question. I'm somewhere between an atheist and agnostic. I'm not sure where. Um, God has created this entire universe, and the Quran speaks a lot about how it has taken so many days, and mountains, and this and that, and life is going to be a test, and whatnot. My question is, way before God decided to create this entire universe, before he decided to put human beings, before he decided to send Prophet Muhammad or Adam and Eve, way before he even planned about doing any of this, he knew the end result of it. He knows in the end he will be disappointed by certain people and he will throw them in hellfire. He knows they will be burning. He knows they'll be tortured and that is when they'll be repenting for what they've done. Way before he created the entire universe, he knows the outcome is gonna be bad. It may be good for certain people who are in heaven, but he knows that he can save those people from being in hell. Way before he even decided to go ahead with the creation. Yet he decides to go ahead with it, with all his godly logic. Why would he want to do that? The question, if I can just put it in this manner, how can God be so sadistic that he would actually go ahead with a plan which he knows is going to end up in that manner? That's the first side of the coin. The second side of the coin is, for some reason, if I believe that, okay, God is all, almighty and he understands everything is great, God is great. Why is God insisting in the Quran that look at the mountains, look at the protons, the electrons, this and that, everything is so synchronized, how amazing I am. Why is he forcing us to find his creation amazing when it is a piece of cake for God? I mean, he just had to say kun and it was done. Then why is it a big deal if God has made this entire universe which is so amazing? Because for God it's nothing. So I should not be really amazed at his creation. He can do much more than this. So I do not understand why he wants us to respect what he's done or find it amazing what he has done. The brother asked a very good question and a very intellectual question. It's a very good question. And he has seen some of my tapes on YouTube, even of atheism. And this question that is troubling him, he hasn't got the answer to. The brother asked the question that Almighty God knows everything before he created the heaven and the earth, before he created human being, before Prophet Muhammad came here. Peace be upon him. He knew everything. If he knew that some will go to heaven, majority will go to hell. So why did he create the human being? Isn't it sadistic? Is the basic question, correct? Right. Second question, I'll come to it later on. Brother, told you that majority will go to hell? Well, even if one person is going, it doesn't make any sense. Even if one person goes to he could avoid hell, that. hell, he could have avoided that. I mean, he could avoid being disappointed. Of course. I'll reply. The brother said, even if one person goes to hell, it is as though God would be disappointed. God doesn't get disappointed ever. Now coming to your question, I started a school. I started a school. And you may have heard Islamic International School. If a teacher takes an examination, if she's just, while she is giving the examination, she writes in the maths paper, two plus two is equal to how much? The student in front of her or him, the teacher, writes five. She can very well tell the student, change five to four. Would it be just on the teacher during the test and examination to correct a student who's writing a wrong answer? Right, but if she has an option that the student doesn't need to do any of that and still no, just no, no, go no, I'm asking a simple question. I'm asking you a simple question. The teacher has given the question paper. Right. All the students were informed about it. Right. 
for that particular situation for as well. For that particular situation, the teacher can tell, their student changed five to four. What will the other students think about? Unjust. But Correct. God can be just at the same time. He can create a complete, completely different condition. He doesn't have to go ahead with that situation. He's not bound by any situation. Brother saying, God, Almighty God can create something which is perfect and will not make mistake, correct? That right. God has already done, He created the angels. God right. created the angels, the angels never go against any commandment of God. But human being is a better creation than angel. The angels have got no free will of their own. If you have heard my tapes, if you have not heard, I'll tell you now. The angels are a creation of Almighty God, but not the best creation. Almighty God created the human beings. The human beings have a free will to go against God or to follow God. If you have chosen to be a human being, if you disobey his commandments, you go to hell. If you obey his commandments, you're superior than the angel. Because the angel doesn't have a free will of his own. Then he follows God. It's nothing great. The human beings are the better creation of Almighty God. Almighty God has given a free will. That's a different question that Almighty God knows. Because he has ilme gab, he has knowledge of the future. He is more superior. So he has created such a creation which has a free will. The fault is of human being, not God. No, but God has created us with that fault. And he knows he not can avoid fault, that. Not fault. It's not fault, brother. It is free will. Why is he giving us a free will when he knows he's going to eventually put these many people in hell? Why is he doing something? That a is a different creation. Like, would you want to create something which can think on its own, or would Why you want would to? Someone so compassionate, be can that, also Brother, that's what I tell you. Time. What you want, God has already created an angel. I'm asking you, which is better, an angel following Almighty God or a human being following Almighty God? Which is better? For me, absolutely, if I get a second chance, I would want to be an angel. Why would I risk second going to Second chance, hell? correct. That's why Almighty God says in Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 172, Almighty God bought all the human beings from the loin of Adam and asked them, is there one God? All agreed. Almighty God says in Surah Hashar, chapter 59, verse number 21, if Almighty God revealed the Quran on the mountain, the mountain would shut down. Almighty God says in Surah Azab chapter 33, verse number 72, it okay. is the human beings who were fools who said we want to be human beings. You and I, you and I were fools. Now you cannot backtrack. Once you said you want to appear for the test, once you read the test paper. Nobody test, asked me. That's they what, asked Adam and Eve. No, brother. Quran says every human being was asked. And then it is washed off. This memory is washed off. If the memory is away the test, Almighty God says in the Quran, do you want to be a human being? If you become a human being, you can become superior to an angel or can get inferior. If you don't want to become a human being, just pass. Even we, for argument's brother, sake, let me even in that Please let me complete. You ask the question. All right, go ahead. If you Sorry. interject, how will answer? Sure, go ahead. So Almighty God asked the human beings and the Quran says, we human beings were fools, you and I both were fools who opted for the test. Now, once you undergo a test, if you follow the commandment after free will, you be superior to an angel. If you disobey Allah, you become inferior to an angel. We wanted to pass with distinction, you and I. You and I. You told, I don't remember. Of course you will not remember. And even I don't remember. But I believe in the Quran. On the day of judgment, Almighty God says, not a single human being will object to the justice of Allah. That will come to know on the day of judgment. Only thing we'll say, please give us one more chance. Almighty God will say it's too late. Because if he wants to give you a new chance, even I'll have to come back in the world again. Again, everyone. So those who failed, he can't get only the failures. So the Quran says no one will ever object on the justice of Allah, they will request Allah give us one more chance, Almighty God is too late. Almighty God gives us chances in this world itself. You make a mistake, Allah gives you a chance to repent. You repent, Allah forgives you. Again you make a mistake. All the, once you die, it's only one. So as far as the first question is concerned, why did God create? Because it's a better creation. Any logical person, including you, has to agree that a person who has the free will is a better creation than a person who has no free will. Only your question you don't remember is perfectly right. When you die, when you're resurrected, that time you and I will meet. Then you will say, I remember. Even I don't remember now. But I have faith in the Quran that Quran cannot be wrong because scientifically, if you heard my 
lecture. 80% of the Quran is 100% matching with science. 20% is ambiguous, neither right, neither wrong. So my logic says when 80% is 100% correct and not even 0.1% of the 20% is wrong, so my logic says even this 20% would be right. I'm a scientific person, I'm a logical person. So I believe in the statement of the Quran that we chose. If you wouldn't have chosen, you could have questioned God. Why did you make me a human being? Then God would have been at fault. But God says in the Quran, he asked, the mountains were afraid. Everything else was afraid. We human beings opted for this. But do you so, remember being asked? I don't remember being asked. Brother, if you heard my answer, I mean, I don't remember. But if you remember the very the test, imagine if a teacher teaches you something. Teacher teaches you something. Teacher gives you the book. The teacher has to take away the book for the test. If the teacher says, okay, take the book and answer, where is the test? Okay, but why? After the examination is over, you can go home and check or not. But even before the Bre exam brother, began, God brother, knows. Brother, 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 result. listen to me. After the examination is over, can you go and check home or not in the textbook? Absolutely. But during the examination, can you check? No. So now the examination is going on, brother. Once it's over, you can check. If you tell teacher, teacher, I want to see the textbook, I don't remember. No. During the examination, you cannot refer to the textbook. It will be called cheating. Correct? So once the examination is over, if you don't remember, you tell God, what is this illogical? But Quran says not a single human being will object to the justice. Let the test go over. So today, I being a scientific person, I being a logical person, based on my knowledge of science, based on my logic, when I read the other scriptures, and when I read the Quran, I find Quran is the only book, only religious scripture on the face of the earth which passes this test. So therefore, I, being a scientific person, being a logical person, agree, okay, fine. This statement of the Quran also has to be right. I don't remember, that is the test. If I remember, where is the test? So that answers the first part of the question. First part, that saying that God was sadist. God is not sadist. For example, I start a medical college. I want the school students to go to medical. How many students who go to school enter the medical college? Just roughly, can you guess? Few, surely less than 5%. Less than maybe 1%. So why did you make a college where only 1% can enter? Fine, it is for selected few. So same way God made heaven, Jannah, Jannat Firdos, Everyone cannot go to Jannat Firdos. Why not? Sorry? Why not? Why can't every Why can't everyone go to medical college? Because it's human capacity. If if humans hey. were capable of being able to put everyone in medical college, they would. That's the way we are made. The same way, everyone cannot become a doctor. Only those who have the capacity, same way everyone cannot go to Jannat Firdos, the high levels of paradise, we have to strive. God has given you capacity. If you don't follow his guidance, you cannot. If you follow his guidance to go to Jannah, is very easy. If you're intelligent, it's very easy. If you're intelligent and if you're truthful to yourself. But if you're not truthful to yourself, even a non-intelligent man can go to Jannah. Only thing you should be truthful. God has given you different options how to follow him. Some people think they are smart. I tell them they're extra smart. If they were smart, they would see it is crystal clear in black and white that this is the word of God. You have to follow it. That's the reason Francis Bacon said, little knowledge of science makes you an atheist. In-depth knowledge of science makes you a believer in God. So I wouldn't say God is sadist. I said we were fools who opted to undergo the test. Not God. God gave you an option. What do you want to be? We chose. So we are responsible, not God. God is not a sadist. We are fools. That's what the Quran says. On the day of judgment, you'll come to know, inshallah, you and I both. Inshallah, if I go to Jannah, inshallah, inshallah, I'll pray to God, I'll thank God. You know, I was a good person, I choose to be a human being. If you pass that, if you fail, then we will curse our own self. Hope that answers the question. The second part? Sorry, what is the second part? 
that even if I believe how almighty he is, how knowledgeable he is, why is he so bent on convincing us, look at the mountains, look at the electrons, look at the That's protons? Right. The second part of the question was that why does almighty God give references of the mountain that he's created this? For him it is peanuts. So why is he talking? You know why is he saying? He's saying these peanut things, mountain, they would shudder. You human being was superior, why don't you understand? Quran says in Surah Hashar, chapter 59, verse number 21, had the Quran been revealed on the mountain, the mountain would have fallen down to utter ruin. But to us human beings, it makes no difference. He's giving these examples to show that these things which are so powerful, the mountains, etc., which he has created, would have submitted the will. Why don't you human beings do? He's trying to give an example that we are fools. He's not trying to praise himself. And whenever he asks us to praise him, or when he says, for we say, Allah Akbar, God is the greatest. Do you think it will change Allah? No. Whether you say a thousand times Allah Akbar or a million times, he cannot become greater. He's already the greatest. The reason we say these things is because it is our human mentality, our human nature that we follow the people who are famous, we follow the people who we praise. For example, your mother has a heart attack. There is unknown person on the street who gives you the treatment. And you heard that the best heart specialist in the world is Dr. X. Now, will you follow Dr. X's advice? Or the person on the street who you don't know dr x why because dr x is famous people know him he's the best in the world so the reason in our salah in our life we say allah akbar allah is the greatest allah is the most wise allah is the most intelligent why if we say that it doesn't benefit allah it benefits us that if we praise him we follow him if we follow we go to jannah to allah it makes no difference Therefore Allah says, will you not then believe? Will you not then understand? That means the Quran is revealed to the people for understanding. So he's giving this example not to make himself great. He's already the greatest. Whether you say a million times Allah is the greatest, it will not make a difference to Allah. He's telling it to you. Allah says in the Quran, Allah does not require you, you require him. So when we praise him, it is human psychology that the person you praise, person you talk great about, you tend to follow his advice. By following his advice, it will benefit you, it will not benefit him. He is already the greatest, he is already the merciful. So these are rules and regulations laid down. He is our creator, he knows our mindset. So the reason he speaks about this then, ah, such a best. Like, you are a student of science, correct? I am also a student of science. The moment I come to know, Allah mentioned these scientific facts which we came to know today, 50 years back, it increases my faith in Allah. Allah says in Surah Fusila, chapter 41, verse 53, Sanuri mayatina fil afaqi wa fi anfusim hatta yatabayna anna ulaq. Soon we shall show them our signs in the furthest regions of the horizons and into their soul until it is clear to them that this is the truth. So Allah is giving these examples so that it benefits us. For him, it makes no difference. It is benefiting us, so he is giving us a chance to follow him so that we can go to heaven. Hope that answers the question, brother. I recognize his power, and I understand he's amazing and all that that he's done. But am I expected to be amazed at his achievements at creating this universe? Because for me, for him, it's like a one-second job. Correct. Right. So for him, which is one second job, when he tells you not to have alcohol, if I you realize... Sure, but am I expected to be amazed but, at his creation? No, see, the thing is that, that he's not there to prove himself better. If you believe that for him it is peanuts, so will a person lie? No. So if he says don't have alcohol, you will not question him. No. Don't have pork, you will not question him. Yeah, but I'm not amazed at his creation because for him it's nothing. Compared to us, it's amazing. For him it's nothing. Right. But compared to us, a person who can create the universe, when he tells me not to have alcohol, I immediately follow. Sure, Amen. I don't mind following him, but do I have to be amazed at his creation, as is said in the Quran? See, as you asked me the question, should I be amazed at the creation? Right. I would say, if I believe human being is a better creation, then yes, I'm amazed 
and then I say Alhamdulillah he has made me better than that so if I'm amazed he made the mountains he made the stars he made the Sun ah but he made Zakir Naik also he made a human being and we are the best of creation so he give this examples so that we realize what benefit he has given to us all the favors he has given to us talking about the science talking about the protons talking about the mountains finally he says human beings are the best creation so in comparison we have to agree that our creator has created this human body the molecules the dna the complex thing which can never come by chance so in this way we are amazed at the creation of the human being and then we submit to him if you are not amazed only by being amazed we submit that he is our creator he is worth worshiping no one else can do that this is so that we worship him and we pass the test and we go to paradise hope that answers the question if bill gates gives me a hundred dollars should i be amazed that he has given me that money uh, i believe that the question has been answered and unfortunately we are very constricted for time you are welcome to come back tomorrow inshallah as with all of the brothers and sisters we have come to the end of tonight's session so please a very I just big give thank this you last. He said, if bill gates gives you hundred dollars should i be amazed will you get amazed brother the question is why should bill gates give you hundred dollar If you tell me a Tom, Dick and Harry gives you $100, nothing to be amazed. Bill Gates gave me $100. It's something that he gave you. Why did he give you? Why not somebody else? Why? The question is, why did he give you is the question. Okay. If some Tom, Dick and Harry gives you, if a man on the street gave you $100, Bill Gates. Got it. You got That's it, no? Nah? got it I got that so now you're convinced huh? yes absolutely that is the answer so inshallah I hope that will come closer to Islam so I should not be amazed at the fact that he's given me the money I should be amazed it's him who's given the money Alhamdulillah got it. so it was worth the time extending Alhamdulillah may Allah reward our dear Sheikh Dr. Zakir Naik a big thank you to Dr. Zakir Now, as I mentioned, just a reminder, we will have uh, Dr. Zakir back again tomorrow night, inshallah, continuing with Ask Dr. Zakir. So if you missed out on your question today, make sure to come tomorrow, inshallah. We're going to be resuming the Dubai International Peace Convention at 10 a.m. tomorrow, inshallah. So we hope to see you all there. May Allah reward you and bless you all and protect you. Have a very good night. May Allah keep you safe. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Stepped inside his home, he was overwhelmed with fear An angel came with words from God, things were still unclear Saying read, read, but he could not read Amazing words that he heard A trembling deep inside his heart, confused by what had occurred there was only one who could comfort him To help him see the light To ease his fears, to reassure Was Khadija his wife He said Zamiluni, Zamiluni Dathiruni, Dathiruni A mighty task has come before